and hello everybody. Welcome to CTN Sports Game of the Week. I'm Nick the Jinx Wisniski along with Kevin the Mayor Bryant and we have got rivalry game for you tonight, Kevin. Kevin, often I ask you for stats, numbers, something fun like that. I don't want any of that. I want trophy talk. Trophy talk is it's the Ted Heisel Bowl. And we had that trophy down on the field before the game. We'll show everybody that trophy we'll during the game or maybe after it once we're awarding game. it to the winning team. But Ted Heisel was an old uh, 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 Ann Arborite. Actually, Nick, you'll love this. He is known as the grandfather of talk radio. Whoa, so like he started talk radio back in the day when he got tired of playing records. I'll give you a full story as we go through this game. I expect nothing less. And the Pioneers kicking off, choosing to kick off here at Huron. And it looks like the Rats are going to start their scrimmaging at about the 36-yard line, we'll call that. Uh, Kevin, both of these teams looking for postseason action. What uh, what can we what can we say about both these squads? Well, first time since I believe 08 that we have both of these teams with winning records coming into this game, and yes, both teams are in line to be in the postseason action. This game will go a long way in deciding who is definitely in and who's not. Who's going to have to wait until next week? It looks like Quinn Stevens with an early carry there for the Riverettes. That handoff was to Rats might be six, going back and forth Stevens. between their quarterbacks tonight. I was speaking with some of the coaches, the and Harding is going to start off, but they really like the way Wells has been playing, and Wells actually, he gives a real big jolt of energy to the team is what the coaches were saying. Rats handoff right up the gut. Stevens again puts up the first down and then some, crosses midfield, gets down to the 41. Oh, excuse me, that was number five. That was easily. As usual, the Rats multiple threats when they're running the ball. Yeah, and, you know, that was a great job by that line up front on that left side to really open up a level for easily to you really weave his way through that second level of the defense. River Rats wearing those home blacks right now, Pioneers in the road whites. Another handoff to and take a look and see Stevens. easily using some stiff arm action there. You can see everybody's out into. Ooh, was that a little face mask at the end? Sure seemed like he had the face mask on the way down. Runner down, but uh, a little bit of extracurricular. Yeah, you might see uh, some plays like that here coming up in this rivalry game, in rivalry game in the Heisel Bowl. And you might also see big tackles behind the line of scrimmage there. Great job there by the two. Pioneer defenders getting in there and bringing down Elijah Easley. You can see Easley had no room to go here when he's going to look for an opening. Looks like the line did a good job of coming down, but number 52 for the Pioneers really did a great job of coming in there and holding on to uh, for dear life until he had a teammate come in and help out on that tackle. Crosling and Bowling both there with the takedown for the Pioneers. Hand off to Stevens again. Oh, broke a tackle there. Looked like he was down before the end of the play, and then he just kept motoring, and they're on the opposite side from where we're at, Nick. But watch this uh, this run again here. It's by Stevens. Take a get punch and keep those legs moving. Yeah, that's exactly what you like to see from those kids is, like you said, just keep those legs moving, keep chugging forward, keep falling forward. You never know what good things can happen. And these are the type of things that Coach Love has really instituted this year. He's got his guys playing hard. He's got them trying hard, you know, from whistle to whistle, from play to play. And it's amazing taking over after the original head coach, the new coach, had to retire after the first game of this season. Rats scrambling out, getting past the line of scrimmage, knocked out about the 20 about the 19-yard line. And you see there, that's the decision-making of Harding. When he doesn't see anybody open, he's going to still keep his head downfield. But look at him churn to get up to that line of scrimmage, get out of bounds, and live to play another down. And you're right, his head was up the whole way, as if maybe if I can just get a little bit of a chance here, maybe I can toss one to the guys downfield. But uh, great job by the Pioneer defenders, great job by the Pioneer secondary to keep their men covered. All right, now another handoff inside to Elijah Easley. 
easily the, the man that refuses to go down gets a little bit further in there. Boy, there's a lot of mayhem going on up in the middle there. The Pioneers brought both of their linebackers, really stuffed that hole. But you're right, easily just keeps churning those legs and just pulling defenders with them upfield. And a great job initially making this first man miss. He seemed like he was going to go uh, outside, but nice juke left and then cut back inside enabled him to get a little bit further up the road. And this looks like, is that is that Wells in? No, that is so hard. All right, now back looks up into the middle, finds his man, hits him, and he's brought down. That'll be another River at first down. Looks like that was Giorgio Pitts, the wide out. Uh, we've seen some exciting action out of Pitts over the time we've had a chance to have him here on our game of the week. And good to see him with some sticky hands to begin this game with. Good for us to see, good for the River Rat coaches to see. And this is quite an opening drive here for the River Rats. And it keeps on going. Yeah, only one pass play that was successful, two attempted. But this has been all on the ground, and this is a statement drive by that offensive line. We believe in you from the coaching staff, Coach Love, and we're going to run right behind those tackles. Second and seven now, another handoff up the middle, and the Pioneer line does finally wrap him up, bring him down. Yeah, and it, it looks like the uh, running back lost his footing right when he got the handoff there and had a tough time getting uh, up to the line of scrimmage. Nice shot in by the goal line there by our camera folks. It's like the, the uh, temperature is picking up here. It was colder when I arrived here at the game. What a grab there by Pitts. And that should be good enough for the first down. That'll give them first and goal from about the one yard line. What a toss there by Harding. He threw it right at the pylon and only where his man could grab it. And Pitts did a great job of clutching that thing with the fingertips, bringing it down and in. And he's got the River Rats knocking on the door here. I'm sure those gloves helped some though. Yeah, they don't hurt. Looks like here on this one short man or motioning to the bench to bring him in. Correction. What about the uh, the Philly uh, brotherly love here? The old tush push, is the they're calling push, it? Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're giving that. I mean, that's just, it's a dangerous play for high school kids, especially if we can just hand it off to your man that's gotten you this far, Elijah Easley, right there. And he'll take you into the promised land and score that first touchdown at home in this rivalry game. Yeah, again, you know, it was just a superior drive. Uh, really built on that offensive line. A uh, lot of mayhem going on up there in the middle, and you can see how the offensive line just pushed that defensive line back into the goal line. Easy touchdown, and look at those fans. Come on, you need to get a little bit hype. You're sitting right next to the <laughs> thing on band, man. Come on, those parents, they must be band parents. They might be band parents, right. They're, they're focusing in on the dulcet tones of the River at band. I was talking to you before the game, and this would be a challenge. I always like putting you know, people on the spot. For our director, Rob Cross, one of these days, we got to get a camera over on the home side here and at Pioneer so we can see those band members out there in their faces. I keep seeing tush pushes <laughs> during the band halftime, uh, you know, performances. Yeah, I'm sure running another several hundred feet of cable is no big deal. I'm for sure my mic is about to cut off, too. <laughs> And extra point is good for the River Rats, and that's everything you could hope for in an opening drive from here on. I mean, when you're playing, uh, especially, uh, it, it really builds off of that game last week from Bedford that Huron went on the road, and it looked like they were going to go into overtime, and their defense stepped up at the end, had a big defensive stop in the last minutes, and maybe that propelled this team uh, to get to this point uh, to be looking at, you know, early good momentum against your crosstown rival. Pioneer will go out there and try to answer. So did you figure out why we're playing this game on Thursday? Nope. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard various things, but I I'll take Prime, it. I thought Prime was going to be broadcasting this game <laughs> in the CTN. I mean. High end over end kick there received by number eight for Pioneer. That's going to be Tyler Craig. 
And we are getting word that there is no school tomorrow. So because of that, complete confirmation on that end. I'd heard, I'd heard rumors much the same from uh, our director. He said pretty much the same thing. We got a little uh, mid-fall break. Yeah, because they don't have enough breaks in Ann Arbor. Uh, and they, they wonder why, uh, you know, education is declining. They're taking all these days off. And, and you know, the, the real burden is on us parents. When the kids are out of school, we have to figure out something what's going to happen because we got to watch them. Send them, send them to the library. They can learn about Ted Heisel. They know how to turn off the ring, you know, so you know, can't tell who's coming over the house. These kids are smart nowadays. Pioneers getting ready to scrimmage here from their 38-yard line. Kalen Wong, last week's key player of the game, looking upfield, but he's rushed running, scrambling, slides down, gets just past the original line of scrimmage. That play started off a little funky. It looked like the running back went to the wrong side on the play action, and Wong still the smart quarterback that he is. He takes it upfield. But just like we were talking about Hardy, Wong does an awesome job of looking down the field until the very last moment before he crosses that line of scrimmage. Well, it's Evan Burkhardt, who you said may have uh, missed an assignment there, but he did throw a pretty solid block for Wong along the way. Burkhardt in motion again. Wong out of the shotgun, man to his right. Hands it off to Lage, but he is absolutely devoured by several Riverette defenders. Easily came through there. We talked about easily running the ball. Look at easily playing defense on the linebacker. And he's the second man to clean up the action. 23 got there first, but wow. Great play for the River Reds because no room there uh, for Lang to get going. Yeah, Lang had nowhere to go on that one. Elijah Easley. Looking at third and 10 now for the Pioneers. Long two men right, two men left after the motion. Looking downfield, steps up into the pocket, but runs into it, runs into several River Rats. And he's going to be brought down handily behind the line of scrimmage. And that is a quick series for the Pioneers. Yeah, the Pioneers, it looks like Alex Merritt of uh, number 50 really came with the heat here as Wong tried to squeeze through that pack. And you see 50 just grabbed a handful of jersey and pulled Wong down. But that the play, the whole drive started off funky from that first handoff where the running back went the wrong way. It just looked like the Pioneers were trying to get above the chains and they never could. Well, just a lot of pressure from the River Rats coming in. They were bringing those uh, those linebackers pretty consistently. And we don't know if that one was touched or not. Definitely muffed. But a River Rat player still comes up with that one. Azar Elmore there, I believe, still came up with it. I don't know how. Man, that guy bounced up. It touched and people. Quint it Stevens got him there. Quinn not grab that ball. I mean, you've you got to understand that ball, especially this time of the year when it gets a little bit cooler out, is going to bounce tricky off of the turf. Well, and I wonder if Al Kakani saw that he did not did or did not have the ball because he went for the tackle yeah, rather than going for the, go ball. for the ball. Let's see this again. He's got to bounce back. He's got to get out of the way of that ball once it's on the turf, and that's something that Coach Thompson or uh, Coach Love will have to bring up to him on the sidelines. Fortunate for the Huron River Reds to get that ball back. Very fortunate. Very fortunate indeed. So the Riverettes will be starting deep in their territory. They're going right back to the handoff. Why wouldn't they? And this man breaks out to the right-hand side, and there's nobody in front of him. And this could be pay dirt for the Riverettes on the first play from scrimmage of this drive. And it is indeed another rat touchdown. Elijah easily takes it to the house. 80-yard touchdown for Hira. Man, I would say it was blocking, but that was all speed, right? Once easily gets to the corner, you saw him put the the, 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 the the top gear on, and he was just on for his second score of the game. And watch just how fast he gets to the outside. Buzzai keeps the ball on the outside. Great block on the edge there from number eight, and he really set the, the edge for the table to be easily taken to the house. Once that easily block was set, he was gone. That's, that is exactly where that play ended for the Pioneers and where easily, as you so astutely put it, easily 
got into that, right? the end zone. I, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Uh, not so easy, though. I mean, that he's that kid's fast. That kid is fast. He turned on the afterburners, and he, he got he in. tired, there. though? We saw him playing on defense, and he was getting into the backfield. And, and then, we and then we looks the like, then we looks like uh, they had, um, you know, him getting the ball right on the first drive on the offense, and he did not miss a beat. These kids are getting tired. They're 17. They got the next four days off from school. Well, we Come on, four days tired. off from They're school. Not. How many days off do these kids need? <laughs> as many as it takes, apparently. Oh my gosh, I feel bad for these parents. Here in Ann Arbor, they got to come up with, you know, Plan B, C's, and D's. Practices. So uh, this has to be a regrouping re time right now for these guys right now. Right? Yeah, here's another here's another first group that needs to come up with the Plan B's and C's right there. These uh, these pioneer coaches have got to figure this out. They got to stop the bleeding and definitely get something going on this next offensive set. Huron has uh, won the last three games in a row. Never have won four games in a row in this series. When I took a look at that trophy, just so Litter. many pine, just pioneer, littered with pine. The not name pioneer, the word pioneer, no. Not 1987. What, really, Kevin, kind of, what happened that year? There was some quarterback in 87 that wasn't having it. He wrote an editorial to the Ann Arbor News and said he was going to be pioneer. I don't know who that guy was. Sounds a lot like me, though. And two-point conversion attempt by River Rats, no go. And that is a big stop for the Pioneers and a really nice feather in their cap that they can put in going into this next drive. And again, I'm going to have to go grab Coach Bellers on that one because that was number 27 on the tackle. Don't see his name, but great job on the effort because he did not let go from Harding once he got his grips on him. And they were going for two straight from the jump. Looks like it was a run. Looks like it's an RPO, and the quarterback was going to keep it. And there was nowhere for him to go on that play. And that might be the little kick that the Pioneers need coming into this kickoff here. Yeah, and then and you got to think it had to come. It almost came with that, you know, almost turnover on the punt. Pioneer kick is away. He's looking straight up the gut, right up the middle. Barha, got to go right him. Hold on. You know, Nick, the, the thing about all of these different jersey numbers, I got the inside scoop. Someone's got it. Pioneers missing their away jerseys this year. So they're having to use both their, they're working with the JV team as well as the varsity team and going back and forth from jerseys. So Farha might be number one on the roster, but he's number 12 tonight up there on the screen. Well, you can just see the way that that kid's running. Right, even on the uh, replay there, you can just tell that that's Malik Farha. He's different. He's got that kind of run Malik is yeah. different. Yep. That's why one of the things with Coach Griggs is I'd love to see the how, how creative they are with getting him the ball in different uh, positions. It's a handoff to Lage again. Lage gets out past the line of scrimmage, picks up about six on that one. And these are the little plays that the Pioneers need to get going. First down, right? Uh, beginning of this drive starts off a heck of a lot better than last drive. Last drive, the running back's going the wrong way. This drive, five-yard gain, that's the way to stay ahead of the chains. That was carried by Leach, and he was brought down Second by Second down now for the Pioneers. Tyler See Fry. what they dial up. Three wide to Warren's right, two to his left. Empty backfield. That pass out to Burkhart never had a chance. No, but it is uh, luckily, I mean, Stevens put some wood on uh, Wong in the backfield. Lucky for one to get that ball away. But again, yeah better defense here on this play. Did a nice job, job leading his man out there, but like you said, uh, Elijah Hayward was just ready for that. And so far, this River Rat defense, this, this zone defense they're throwing out there, has really stymied what Pioneers have been trying to do. Yeah, I do believe that they're being able to keep their eyes on that football in the zone defense. Last couple weeks, we've been seeing a lot of teams play man. Well, I'm now rarely under center. Watch out for Connie. Watch out for Connie. 
Wong does find his man up the middle, caught. That's a believe that's Brabs. Ocean Brabs right up the middle. And that is exactly what that young man brings to the table. Never gives up, always working hard to get open, always moving around. And you will often see him open in the middle of the field the way you did right there. And Wong was looking for him the whole way. You can see, this is like Wong. He, you can put on a highlight reel of Wong, and he does this a lot. He buys time with his feet and keeps his eyes downfield and he has total confidence in his receivers because Brabs is nowhere near that ball. Well, and you can see the Huron player, I believe that was Jabril Abernathy, it, he thought the ball was coming right to him. He was getting ready. He's preparing himself for the ball to come to him, and Brabs jumped up in front of it, snagged that one, and first down for the Pioneers. You know, I wonder if they called a roughing the passer on that play because Juan took such a big hit after he left that... Uh, um, after he let go of that ball, and they did add another 15 to the end of that play. One looking over to the away sideline. He's got two men with him, left and right. One in motion now, that's far out in motion. One quick slant pass. Looking for Evan Burkhardt, but no go. You know, I really like the way that um, Wong, uh, well, actually the play, the way it was designed. You see Farha, he takes the eyeballs of everybody. By him being in the backfield, uh, kind of as a decoy, uh, kind of almost opened that slant up for Burkhardt. Second and 10 upcoming now for the Pioneers. Similar look there, once again, Farha to his right, uh, Lage to Wong's left, man in motion. And there, that's, that's the handoff to Farha now. Farha jukes and jives up the middle, picks up a few for the Pioneers. Watch the reality down low here and really make itself difficult for the defenders to find him. And again, his motor's always on go, like energizing Bunny. Yeah, that's a, that's a great call by you pointing out him getting so low that way. Just, you know, those, those thighs are down, everything is down, and it's really tough for those linebackers in this zone defense to see him. Pioneers now look like they're really taking advantage of what the defense is setting. Because now on this drive, we're seeing a lot of look, look at me, check with me coaching's uh, calls on the sideline. Third and a manageable pat, uh, pass play there for the Pioneers. But that receiver, I think that was Ocean Brabs oh, off his hands. Why did he drop that? Was that a little too hot? It didn't seem like there seems like there might have been a little miscommunication there between two. It might have come out a little early. An uh, in and out move didn't get. It almost got tipped, but I think the defender actually changed the trajectory of that pass because Brabs did just get one paw on it as opposed to putting two hands up and grabbing. And the Pioneers determined they're in four down territory here, so we'll be fourth and four here. Wong sees him coming out of the backfield. Perfectly passed, perfectly placed pass. Lage goes up, finds it. Great lead, great bring in, and that is a touchdown, Pioneers. Just what the doctor ordered for Pion. I love that pattern by Leighton. He comes out of the backfield and does the old cheer route, that out and up route. Watch, he goes to the out, and then he turns up the field. Defenders have no, they're, they're lost on that play. And obviously he go he brings it in and has a little word there at the end. Why not? But just perfect timing, great touch by Wong, the way he threw that. Not too hard, didn't zip it, but it wasn't touch. exactly a floater, just yeah. a nice touch getting that one in. And the Pioneers boot that one through, and now we're only down 13-7 here in the first quarter. 127 to go. And let's just see how close these teams are, Nick. When we start talking about their, their records being four and three, points four, well, let's just say that points four and against are about the same. Both teams have given up. Huron's given up 199. Pioneer's given up 196 points. All the wins for both teams. Oh, I'll let you tell about where we're going to be at next <laughs> Speaking week, though, of Monday. dropping names, numbers, hopefully we'll be uh, Saline at Pioneer for some field hockey. Then we're going to wrap up this fall game of the week season next some Friday. Pirates. Pinkney at Pioneer. Well, hey, that game next week for Pioneer, <laughs> they can dial that one in.
Pinkney hasn't won a game since uh, I had hair on my head. Um, you know, but when you start looking at their the losses of both teams, they're always going to lose. Well, the last couple of years to Selena Dexter, right? Let's just throw that out of the box. Pioneers lost to Adrian. They're six and one. Huron's loss was to Lapeer, both beginning of the year. Lapeer's five and two. So there's only one game separating these teams when you look at the losses as well, too. So these games, this is the exact same score that I expected to see coming into this game. Exactly. This is completely what we expected coming in. And also that little uh, fake a by Pioneer, what we expected coming off of last week as well. And it worked out pretty nicely for them. While it didn't give them the ball, it created just enough confusion on that Huron return for them to get down there and now the River Rats are going to have a big field to work in front of them. Well, Wells is the really big play guy for Huron and he, he took a chance of picking that ball up. It didn't look like it was going to make it to the end zone, but after eight games or seven games of the season, after watching the film, how can you be surprised by that, that, that fake kick? That's a great question. That's a great question. They, like I said, we knew it was coming. They've got to know it's coming. You can watch CTN Sports, and, man, and you can see it's coming. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I mean, and we've seen the onside kick of, of that as well, too. So, And we've talked about it. That's That's why they do it, because it, it just creates that little bit of unsuredness on the receiving team. A couple of broken tackles there by the River Rats coming on the outside. He's fired up number two. That's Dyson, That's Dyson Sims yeah. this week. Again, uh, his dad had to tell me he was wearing number two uh, because Huron's had some of the same issues as far as jerseys are concerned. So it's not the rosters that get printed up back in July or something like that. It's finding the jerseys that will fit somebody that week. Big shuffling. Big shuffling up front there for uh, the Pioneers. Big tackling by that defensive line brings down the River Rat runner. Boy, even the River Rat fans over there a little bit, you know, not fired up as they should be in a rivalry game in a Ted Heisel Bowl game, right? Maybe you need to run out there with the trophy. Uh, well, as I was walking with the trophy on the sideline, a couple of the Pioneer guys told me, leave it here right here. Nice. It's not See? going anywhere. That, and that's the attitude you got to have. You like that. Quick outs there by the River Rats. Picks up a few. They'll be just shy of the 40-yard line here with third down upcoming and 27 seconds left to go in this first quarter. There you go. There you go, the band. I think they might have heard you. band is getting wow, the wave going a little bit band. there. They're trying to get the crowd going. What's up with the wave, people? Band's having fun. Got to love that. Very centrally located wave. Flag there going to be probably some sort of call on the offense, false start on the offense. That'll push the Rats back Pretty five yards. Pretty game so far. Only, you know, the, the, the penalties that have been the, the, the head-scratcher penalties, but nothing really that uh, that we've seen over the last couple weeks, as I say that, as we, we're coming out into the first quarter. We got three more quarters, Kevin. I just don't need the jinx, and that will do it for this first quarter action. I hope you're right that we see a nice, clean, smooth game going forward, but only one way to find out. Stick around, folks. We'll have more action coming up here on CTN Sports Game of the Week. Barton Nature Area is a 98-acre park located along the river on Huron River Drive, a few miles north of downtown. Barton Nature Area provides access to Barton Pond if you ascend to the top of Barton Dam. There, you'll find a walking path, green space, and benches. Popular for sunsets, photography, fishing, birding, a scenic stroll, or to get a big dose of nature, the Huron River is quite wide as it pools before the dam. The dam is within park limits and there is a pedestrian walk over the dam. If you are traveling downstream by boat along the Huron River water trail, you will need to portage your boat in order to continue paddling on the other side of the dam. Fortunately, there is a portage boat slide to assist. The public boat launch is accessed from the northern parking lot with both an above the dam and below the dam launch. There is a picnic area next to the main parking entrance. 
The Barton Nature Area Trails are located in the larger area known as the Barton Oxbow, which is bordered by the river and the railway line with bridge access on two ends. The present vegetation gives us plenty of ideas about the history of land. There are four seasons of beauty to be found at Barton Nature Area and great diversity of plant communities to observe. There is another part of Barton Nature Area known as Foster, which is only accessible by boat from Barton Pond. Foster was formerly a small cluster of houses where the train used to stop in what is now the park. This community is gone now, but the name reminds us of the site's earlier land use. For more information, visit a2gov.org slash parkfinder. Welcome back everybody, second quarter action getting ready to get going here at Riverbank Stadium. Nick the Jinx Wisniewski along with Kevin Bryant. High snap there by the River Rats. Gets it away quickly though, fires that into his man. Dyson Sims can't quite pull that one down, Kevin. I didn't like the decision making there by Hardy because that snap threw the timing off. And once that ball got up there, Hardy took that two steps and was releasing it, but his timing was already behind schedule. So that ball was high and behind. And lucky for Sims that he's not playing back when I played because his bell would have been rung with his hands all the way up in the air like that. Christian Gary back to return for the Pioneers. Fourth and seven to go now. Harding just shows off that arm. He does have a really strong arm, but you can tell, especially because his footing on that one was nowhere near where they needed to be. He still fired that one in. And another flag. Before the snap, we have a Cunningham. Heron's going to have to clean up some of these special teams blunders. You know, the almost turnover, touching the ball decision-making. And now here, they're just adding to the field possession that Pioneer's going to gain now. Fourth and 12. Perfect night for football, though. Yeah, I mean, can't beat it. You know, this, this is the late fall setting that you, you dream about. You are correct, sir. Can't beat it. This and that huge. one went this way high. Kick it. And he's going to try to throw that one out of the end zone. Just hail, literal Hail Mary. And then bounces out and is caught what by a river rat. You could not ask for any better of a result. Short of a first down after just a... Miscue after miscue there. I don't even know who was that in the corner that made that throw. Bounced off of several players' hands. What happened here? I think it's Elmore, really, the, the kicker, uh, the punter. But, uh, I mean, I can hear Coach Love right now. No, 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 no. This up. Oh, and this ball right here is just playing 500. Oh, yeah. I mean, that ball was just up in the air forever. And fortunate for the River Rats that that ball bounced in and found a River Rat player. Uh, and luckily, it wasn't even a lineman who caught the ball, right? And just just positive thing that happened, lucky thing that happened one after the other. He, he looked like he tried to slap it away initially. The chains aren't set, guys. The first and ten on the here on chain Details. Well, details. Yeah, a little bit of details. But you, you, you're so right. I mean, just mentioned before that play, though, Huron has to clean up their special team blunders. And what happens? A horrible snap that sailed well over the punter's head. Yeah, Elmore did the did the most with very little. And there's a handoff there. Spinning away out. now before he's met by several uh, pioneers there. Nick, I'm holding my heart. I love the trick plays. I love the trick plays after a turnover as well, too, because... It's a splash play here, ready to happen. Al Kakani won't go down after the first hit. He's fighting for that end zone. Yeah, we've seen him uh, return punts. We've seen him return kicks. And we know the speed that he's got on him 
once he gets going. And that that exactly what it was. He was accelerating when he got that ball in his gut. I mean, he made that corner, made some guys miss. He's used to working in tight places, uh, you know, being on the return team. Great play. Also showed the depth of this Pioneer playbook. We're not seeing just one or two plays. Long there to Lage. Lage right into the heart of the beast that is that River Rat defensive line. And Vince Stevens said, hello. I mean, he's right there in the pile after meeting uh, the, the, defense, or the offensive uh, tackle on that play. That'll be a loss of two yards on the play. Second and ten upcoming now with uh, about ten and a half to go here in this first half. And again, since the Pioneers' first drive, they, they, the offense is getting their instructions after the coaches have seen that defense set in place. Very full backfield there. Lage pulls out now. Wong looks fast to Ocean Brabs. Brabs makes the catch before being brought down by a few River Rats. But that quick slant play is a real nice compliment to some of these run plays we've seen from the Pioneers. And look at this tight spiral up there on there. I mean, right to Brabs, low so Brabs is not going to get any kind of fire from the River Rats coming from the inside. And great action on that play, too, because the motion took the eyeballs to the other side of the field. Again, Pioneers really opening up this playbook. That's the first time we're seeing trips formation, so that's another formation out of the Pioneers. And all, all hope, I think, in conjunction with trying to confuse that, uh, that zone defense by the River Rats. And they're getting the River Rats in different positions as well, too. They're overloading a side, and you're right. I think they're really getting on the Memphis, and they're really wearing down this Huron defense because uh, really since the mid part of the first quarter, Huron has been uh, on the defensive side. Pioneers now first in goal. Whole squad looking into that sideline. Like literally everyone in white is looking for what are we doing next. And you can see the body language of the River Rats. And they're dressing that, uh, the, the peak highlights for the Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month. And that is Huron. I know they're in black, but that is Huron. You can see that they're a little confused and fatigued as well, too, in between plays. There's Wong looking high for his man, but that one sails just a little bit over Farha's head. Farha seemed to have a little bit of separation. He went up for that, but just couldn't quite pull that down. Nice defensive effort there by the Rats. Yeah, Haywood came in at the end to break that ball up, but again, Farha, look where he's putting it. I'm sorry, look where Wong is putting that ball. Really in a position where his player can grab it, not in harm's way. Very good ball placement by the QB. Solid job by the defensive back there to get in there, knock that one away, too. Second down now, and a whole lot of movement there. I find Another motion. formation that we haven't seen. An I formation center, quarterback under center. Hands it off to Lage nonetheless. Nate, Lage makes one man miss, gets into the end zone, knocked on his end, but not before crossing the goal line. And the Pioneers now are only an extra point away from taking the lead in this one. Hey, uh, can you tell that official? that handy me the ball he's old enough to bend down and grab the ball okay don't be going over there and telling the player at the end of the play that he needs to hand the ball to the official that that's going out with the 60s okay this is the game and it's a ted heisel bowl game you see hits like that he didn't even go over and talk to the huron guy and say hey he was in the end zone he goes over to the pioneer guy and says hey pick up the football i ain't got a problem with that i mean there, there could have definitely been a little discussion about that hit after he made it in the end zone and it looks like a fake little trick play but that one sends that away that like kalen wong there was on the trickeration and who else can you rather have as a holder as a qb for those fire plays in. And you're right, that snap, if we can take a quick look at that, it looked like it was going to be a rollout from the beginning. It didn't look like a bad snap where he had to, a little bit high, but I'm still thinking he, he was going to be pulling out with that ball, right? 
maybe maybe it was the option like, hey, if you sit, tell me what you see here, if you see something that yeah, you like, QB, maybe you get you up probably, and turn it around. You probably want to add to your statue too. <laughs> well, you should be able, you should be able to read what's going on there as well. <laughs> so that one didn't quite turn out the way the pioneers probably envisioned, but worth a try, right? You make that, you're up by two. And and that that plays the math well going into the second half. And you miss it, you're, only, you're, you're still tied. Yeah, I, I like going for it on that play anyway. Uh, but, I mean, the Pioneers have really gotten back into this game by here on mistakes, and they're capitalizing on those mistakes. That was a very good drive by the Pioneers. Yeah, great drive by the Pioneers, and it was all set up by, like you said, the mistake that on poor that punt. punt. That poor, yeah. Four special teams will nab you every time you ask these coaches. They'll tell you. Yeah, there's just there's just those things in sports, right? Like the the special teams plays or the walks in baseball. Those those little things that the other team just feeds on. It brings, like you're saying, momentum to the other side when you have blunders like that, and that's exactly what that high snap on that punt before did to the River Rat. I mean, what do we call in this play here? Is it a, I'm calling it a head fake, but that's not really quite right. Just the, the leg fake. Leg leg fake. I like leg that. Punk. And that one squibs to the open hands of the, pot, the river rat defender. Oh, that's got to be a penalty. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was a little, little extra. Yeah, here, comes some, here comes some turf coming out. And, and, and this is what we kind of expect in this game. I mean, this game is going to, that's not going to be the last time we see a penalty flag like that as well, too, because why? All week long, these kids have been talking about this game. It's, it's the game you circle as well, too, on the schedule when the schedule comes out. When do we play against that team? Right, means means so much to both these squads, which has been a rarity over the last few years, as we were discussing. And is this is that Al Kakani? Was that Al Kakani on the hit? Sure was. Oh, yeah, he let him know. Coach did a good job of trying to get in there, but it was too late then. A little bit of testosterone down there. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're fired up. Even into the second quarter, with the way the score is currently, emotions are running high. Like you said, testosterone is there. Definitely a thing out but there. But you said it just before, just seconds ago, Nick, it's those little things. And penalties are definitely one of those little things that's a controllable. I mean, that play right there, Al Kakani, you cost your team 15 yards. Quick handoff up the middle, no go. Maybe grabs a couple there for the River Rats. But you're right, in, instead of being back on their own 40, yep. now they're pushing into Pioneer territory. You're already in four down territory, really. I mean, you're basically only going to gain 18 yards, 19 yards if you had to punt here on second down. And even if you didn't follow us on social media, now is the time to follow us because we'll be showing more games like this coming up on Monday. Right, you are. And there's a long pass downfield. He's got a man open. He makes the catch. He turns it into the end zone. River Rat TD. Well, that pass couldn't have been any easier uh, for. Number nine, Jackson Hayward. That was Jackson Hayward, with number nine. I was just trying to wait to see the number on it. I thought it was eight at first, but check out this arm on Hardy. Just a little bitty flick, and it goes down. And please come out of the air is what uh, Jackson Haywood is screaming there. I need that ball to get out of the air. And you called that throw a flick? I mean, he, he, his feet weren't planted anywhere no. near where they need to be. He, he did a little skip as he was throwing that. Throw. So just once again, demonstrates the arm strength of Harding and what he brings to the table, and not just the strength, but the accuracy to get it down to that open man. Wow, the Rats came back and answered that really fast. And the River Rats going to be going for two there. Handoff, but he puts that on the ground. That handoff just never got going there. But no, I not mean, at I all. Mean, you go, got to go back if you want to look and see how the Rats got into this position. It was the bonehead caught play by Al Kakani, the extra hit out of bounds. Those are plays that these two teams can't make. Either side can't make bonehead plays and think they're going to walk away with a dub tonight. Well, and I think that that's going to be what you're going to hear from both coaches at halftime. Clean it up. Focus don't cost your team any more yards because this game isn't a runaway for either squad. This is going to be that game of inches and we can't afford 
to be making these mistakes and just giving away yards. And I'll tell you, Nick, last or the last time we were at Huron, we played against Dexter, and we saw that gong on the sideline, <laughs> and we walked out of the stadium. I finally got to see it was, uh, was it the coach uh, for, for Dexter who had that. It was uh, George Mikos. And I played against Mikos when he was a pioneer pioneer. And he saw me, I saw him, and the first thing we talk about, this game. This game, that's right. 30 years ago. That's right. That's what these kids are playing for. And that's why you're going to see a little bit of extracurricular after the play. And that's why I say it's not that big of a deal. Maybe a penalty. River Rats ready to Ooh, kick away. Sides. That's a long one. It sure seemed like an offside. We, <laughs> we heard it in the box. We saw a bunch of players pointing. <laughs> Indeed. I think that was number seven, Cameron Drew. Uh, Drew. Uh, let's see him, number seven. He's right uh, second in on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, he's creeping up already. He's all sides already. Yeah, he was ready to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So again, these special teams blunders by the River Rats are putting them into positions that are really just giving the pie high gang, you know, an extra couple yards here, an extra little bit of momentum there. And, and they're not allowing their momentum, the River Rat momentum to build. Well, and we, we've talked so much about the pioneer uh, returners and really special teams as a whole, but when you've got Elka Kani back there, when you've got uh, Mel Farha back there, and then even these up players like this, he takes whoa, it, he's whoa. ready to go. Rumbling, bumbling, as they say, shakes off a couple of tackles before being brought down at the 22-yard line, and whether it is... Oh, they got a flag way back at the back, and Griggs is on the middle of the field because, again, players are having some words, Nick and uh, that big return may be coming back for the Pioneers. And that is a killer if that's the case what happens. Just an absolute momentum buster if that's how it goes. Well, see again, these, these are those things that are gonna cost either squad a game. I mean, that was a huge return by us at Rosenberg, uh, Levi Rosenberg on that return. And again, I mean, he gets downfield, he was running Hard. I love the way this guy turns the ball upfield. He was knocking everybody out of his way. Look at this. Didn't That's think three. twice about it. Let's count the tackles. He, he broke about four or five of them. You're going out of my way? I mean, it's a great job, 77, of putting your body in there uh, to knock him out of bounds. But look at, look at Rosenberg. He's still hyped. That's that energy I love. And as we come back from that replay, that is a penalty on the, the Rats. River Rats. Wow. So now the Pioneers, would they had a lot going for them just with that return. Now they've got, they're really in business, scrimmaging from the 11-yard line. Element of composure is going to be talked about at halftime as well. Keep your head, guys. Hand off to Lage. Can't get past that interior lineman brought down, but four-down territory, Oh, obviously. definitely, all day long. Um, number 50, Alex Meredith. You know, we got to keep an eye on uh, the chippiness, of course, is going to get turned up a little bit, especially as we're, we're heading in towards that halftime. And you're starting to see more and more people coming out to the game. The crowds are, the stands are getting packed on the sidelines. Some of the old players, I'm looking around, I'm seeing old players around. Uh, that's that atmosphere that this game brings out of people. Uh, but yeah, four down territory. Don't worry about kicking this one. Here on River cheerleaders. Good shot of Wong there coming out of the shotgun. Three left wide. Ocean grabs to his right wide. Lays to his immediate left. And we got a penalty right up the start. False start there by the Pioneers. And it just, you can't have that. Well, we had a clean first quarter. I mentioned it. We, didn't, we had two penalties in the first quarter. And you gave me that stern look after I said, hey, we had a clean first quarter over here. Oh boy. You mentioned oh boy. it. Exactly right. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, there, there we saw <laughs> the false start. Do? <laughs> well, you know, you, you talked about the energy ramping up, and, and here's one of the, the double edged swords things. When you do have these chippy penalties, that's something that ramps up the energy on both sides as well, and, and for the better or for worse, which is what, how it can often be translated. 
one. It's for now better if you can get your other player to uh And he's got his man set. cutting up into the corner, and he makes that catch. Touchdown, Pioneers. Evan Burkhard with the grab, but a better pass there by Wong. He put it at the back of the end zone where only his man can grab it. And Burkhard with an over-the-shoulder Willie Mays Hayes style grab. Love it. Beautiful throw, beautiful catch. Wong had great protection. That play all around is positives. When the Pioneer coaching staff reviews that, everybody even did a little, what's, what's, that, the, the, what's the trophy that uh, Michigan Michigan State plays for? The uh, the big... Uh, Paul Bunyan? Paul Bunyan? Yeah. Wasn't that the Paul Bunyan post? Maybe. I think that's the Paul Bunyan post. There's an outside screen pass caught by Tyler Craig, and he smashes his way into the end zone. Two-point conversion, good for the Pioneers, and they're feeling good about what they're up to. Oh, wow. The stands on this side, our press box might start moving because the stands on this side are bouncing up and down, and you can see the tire energy and momentum has just shifted over to this Pioneer sideline. Those rats over there are really, they got their hands in their pockets on the other sideline. No, you just, you said it. You can really feel the energy on this side of the stadium now. And, and just all the wind is sucked out of that other side. And it's the mistakes, the mistakes. And, and then you have a quarterback like this that can capitalize on the mistakes. When you put this Pioneer team with less than 20 yards in the red zone, playbook wide open, it's difficult to cover. Especially, I don't think we've seen the same play run twice. I mean, they're really deep as far as this playbook is concerned for the Pioneers, and the execution level has stepped up in this quarter. Well, and that play was almost perfectly executed top to bottom. Everything, you mentioned the offensive line making those blocks, Wong back, set, set those feet, made a perfect throw, led his man. Burghardt caught it excellently, just everything, top to bottom. Nearly a perfect play. Near, as close to a perfect play as you're going to want. And here I need some something to put the, the air back in the balloon, because right now it's flat. Onside kick. And that one did go off one of the River Rat players and wisely just falls on that one. That Man, that's easier to set up here than down there on the field. Wow, that ball's bouncing all around. I like that. Is that a different kicker as well, too? This is not soccer either. Come on, you got to put a hand on it, not a foot on it. Yeah, it almost looked like I can't bend over for this, so let me deflect it somewhere. Yeah, and that's a really dangerous thought. Like, like you said, that is great in soccer when the ball is round, but uh, the, the oblong nature of that ball is not likely to go where you want it. It did that time. Best thing that happened for number 26, name not on the roster. Riverettes now keeping it on the ground. Handoff right up the gut. A solid 11, 12 yard gain there. Was there a face smash mask in mouth there? football yeah, for the Riverettes? I mean, there was a lot. You saw the runner easily with his head down, and it looked like a hand from one of the Pioneers got in here, right here on this tackle. He's Some, grabbing the ball. Oh, it kind of looked like the. Oh, oh the there, right at the end. 80, right at the end. 81 comes in and grabs a handful of face masks. And that's the second time we've seen it. And there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing What's incidental that right about that. That's at? the hand that brought it right down. He just must have had a bad angle, I suppose. Oh, uh, yeah. And another one right up the middle. Bye -bye. And he makes two men miss, and there's nobody in front of him. You might have one chance, maybe Al Kakani back there. But that will do it. The Rats score again on the ground on another Big run play. Two runs from Easley. 80 yard run, 60 yard run, 140 and two yards. It's the first half. He still has a long time to, you know, churn up some yardage. I mean, that was one try from the Pioneers and bye bye. Best hit was applied by the offensive lineman. Yeah, the, the guy that put the best lick on him, you're right, was, was his own dude. Once he bounced off of that, there was just no looking back for him. Look how long those legs are. Those strides from Easley. It looks like a gazelle out there. 
Easily talking it up with his teammates there. <laughs> He's loving it with his offensive lineman. Thanks, guys. Thanks for that hole. Thanks for getting me those couple of extra blocks up front. And you got me into the end zone. Two-point conversion. Two. I think we're going to see a lot of two-point conversions moving forward. That oh, one throws out. Intercepted. And I'm not sure if. Alkakani stepped out. Oh, boy. He can't boy. in high school. <laughs> yeah. By NFL, that would have been a point, right, if he gets it all the way back. Here you see Harding steps up in the box, gets it away. Looks like he was hit right when he was throwing the ball, but that receiver wasn't open. That was an uh, opportunity for uh, Harding just to eat it. Yeah, right you are. Now it's 24-20. Huron has gotten this lead back up by four points. I don't see any point to go for you know just one point after any touchdowns from oh, here moving no. forward. The way there's the no math, the way the math is played out here tonight. Exactly right. I mean, if there's no defense, I'm gonna try to score every time I have the ball. I might try to kick an onside kick as well too. Catch me an extra possession. Uh, both teams need to improve their tackling. Right now, both both specialty guys on both squads are breaking tackles, and they're just making it to the end zone. Okay, and Gary back to return. And the Riverettes getting ready to kick this one away. El Kakani and Farha deep, but they haven't had a lot to work with tonight. It seems like it's been a lot of these, the, the up men that have just been going for it, grabbing it, moving forward for the Pioneers. Oh, yeah, the Rats are smart. They, they know to keep the ball out of those two hands. No fancy trickeration, though, the way the uh, Pioneers go about their special teams. A little old school over here. Almost off sides of them. Low line drive into the hands of Farha. And that's why you don't kick it to him. And he's excited. He's fast. He's fast and, and as you pointed out earlier, he gets low. And when you're low like that, it's just it's tough to pick up on, especially when you're in the middle of big scrums like this or in the middle of a run uh, run up the middle. And he's he's a slight guy, not a big guy, but he breaks tackles. He breaks tackles bigger uh, than tacklers that are bigger than him. He goes right through them. Nice look into the Pioneer uh, huddle there. And the coach just said basically the, the instructions should be the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the blocking up front has been really nice for Wong the last few drives. So if you give that young man just a few seconds to roll out or step up into the pocket, he's going to find somebody. And the Rats, they're not getting home on defense. Even if they're sending somebody through a blitz or something, you're right. That offensive line is giving Wong some time, or he buys time with his feet. There's a hand up the middle. He spins away, but he spins right into a couple of river rats. Lage nowhere to go. Gobbled up pretty quickly. Uh, double L on the run there. I mean, he, he really did try to spin his way out of phone booth to find some, some running room up front. It just wasn't there to be had. But again, Coach Griggs is giving you a little bit of everything on his calls. Sometimes it's a run. Sometimes it's a pass. Sometimes it's a jet sweep. We've seen a reverse. I mean, the playbook is so wide open, definitely has to be tough on the Riverhead defense. And Wong has gone back to looking at the card on his wrist as opposed to everybody looking into that sideline, so trying to hurry up a little bit on this offensive drive. Wong now looking upfield, steps up. Not what he was looking for there. He thought he had a little bit of an extra room there, but that pocket collapsed on him pretty quick. Meredith has done a good job. We've mentioned his name several times. You can see Meredith right there top of the screen. Number 50 comes through at least two or three guys, and he slowed um, Wong down for his teammates to come in and finish him off. 13 upcoming now for the Pioneers, and now we've gone back to the stare into the sideline. I think the stare into the sidelines worked a little better. They seem to, <laughs> we, we could probably keep track, but I think you're right. Long steps back, looks. He's got a man on his tail, finds a man open. That's Farha. Farha curls back to catch that one at 45. He's going to be five, six yards shy of that first down, though. Fry there on the tackle for the River Rats, and what a superior job it is because 
it is a tall task to take Farha down by yourself. Uh, coming in on the edge, too. It looks like Farha did have his two feet up underneath him uh, to put a full fledged juke move. And we have fourth and seven coming up here. I believe that's Ocean Brabs back there getting ready to punt away for the Pioneers. Brabs has got a foot. Punts, really. No. The timeout before that looks like. I know one thing, if I'm the coach of the River Rats, I'm telling Quinn Stevens, if that ball is bouncing in front of you, fire! Get away <laughs> from it. Whatever Get away the from it. Is, <laughs> the catch word has to be in your head <laughs> before you go out there. And if you see that ball bouncing and behaving in front of you, get out of the way, son! See Coach Love in the bright uh, gold. Yeah, I like that. He's, he's easy to find. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to miss him in that. I, I'm not going to lie. Gold. I, I mean, like it. You like I, that? I do like that. Green I like the yellow. I like I mean, the bright. Old school I, like colors. The I know the, the manufacturers that make all these jerseys and helmets, they want you to have, just like cars nowadays, they want you to have the same color car going down the street. We got the same jerseys all the time on these players. Get back to your normal school colors. Okay, I'm How you really feel down. about I'm it? I'm getting down. I'm yeah. getting down. I'm coming down. Brads gets that one. Kicks real high, not real deep, though. That one bounces. And as you mentioned, player bounces away from it really quickly. He got a decent roll Good off roll of that though, one. Yeah. But, man, that was real high. I think it might have went higher than it went deep initially. Yeah, and again, you can see somebody here on players talking to number 21 coming off of the sideline. The words were being screamed, fire. And he was just walking around. That ball was still bouncing right next to him. Huron has to work on these special teams. I mean, they're doing a poor job so far of communicating and executing on special teams plays. Well, and when you are in a close game like this, it's going to be those little intangibles. And, you know, you've got your offense out there. It's looking really good. Defense, they've got a lot to hang their hat on. But it is those little points here and there where the special teams can come in and be the difference between a W or an L. 252 to go here in this first half is here on takes over again. Harding handoff right. Makes the first man miss, makes the second man miss, and he's got a whole head of steam, and it's going to be tough to bring him down. Pioneers never actually brought him down, but we do have a flag at about the 33 yard line. Yeah, so we'll see if that's going to be a hold. Yeah. yeah, that's going to come back, and you can see the official pointing now. Um, I'm ahead of my, my camera guy. Yeah, he already pointed. But again, those are the, the, the Huron River Rats. This second quarter has been filled with um, penalties and a poor execution. Is that number 64 in the hole there? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he was riding him. I mean, <laughs> but he had too much jersey while he was taking the defender down. And he's nowhere near the play. Those are the holds that. You know, coaches lose hair, eyeballs over, because you just hit yourself in the head. Why? Yeah, just an absolute drive killer. First and 10, 23-yard line now. Harding takes a step back. He's trying to look deep. Shuffles and makes some guys miss. Gets wow. back to the original line of scrimmage, and then Whoa. some. Get out of here. And Harding a gets block. a big block oh. up front, and this might be going to the house. Another massive play for the River Rats that ends in a TD. That looks like it's going to go for 78 yards on the best scramble I've seen all season. I think I can comfortably say much the same. It was a great job of him initially because he was still looking upfield. He was looking upfield. He couldn't find his man. Let's see how many people actually get a hand on Hardy because this is how fast and fleet he is. He's skirting. That's not a touch. That's not a touch. Maybe a touch. Nope. Nah, he didn't touch me. I mean, this guy didn't get touched, Nick. Well, and I think that, I mean, look how many white jerseys are over there. I think everybody just assumed he was either going out of bounds or was out of bounds. When he switched field and came back over, it was over with. Yeah, and, and we've got to look at that play one more time because I want to see if that was 69 on the block. Whoever that big lineman was downfield, and he got him some more pioneer love and really just sealed the deal for that touchdown run for Hardy.
see, this is another thing we were talking about the special teams. There's only one or two teams that you're probably on. Defense, offense. And if they call special teams, that's you. Get out on the field, young man. You're causing us calling timeouts. And that was whistled before the Probably kick. The snap, there is a penalty flag on the field. Flag on the field. A false start charge to Huron. Here in false start. I think they did call a delay a game. They're announcing it as a false start. Looks like the official went up to the uh, motion that it was a delay a game, which makes sense when a player comes trotting out onto the field or meandering uh, very late and then gets set up at his own pace uh, because, you know, why not? It was for sure a meander. It's only a rivalry <laughs> game. It was a meander. Slightly longer PAT, but that one's still good. Long kick in for the extra point, and the River Rats back in charge of this one, 31-20 now. Well, the River Rats are coming up with huge plays, these big splash plays. And, and, and I wanted to watch this play one more time because on this near side, uh, is it 76, it gets downfield. I mean, it takes so long for this play to develop. No, I think it's 52. 52 watch, yeah. Let's check out 52. He comes down and lays some great wood on number eight. Eight doesn't want to see it. And that's that's a Jeff Saturday pancake right there. Uh, that was Vince Stevens on the hit. And uh, Vince Stevens, I got to call you out because I know the coaches are going to say something during film session. A great job getting downfield and helping out your, uh, your fellow team. Oh, look at that. Is, that. is that the athletic director and the old head basketball coach that never leaves the field? Samaha? It does, it does look like Coach Samaha. Okay. Ah, Coach Wally. You know why Wally's here, right? Uh, it's a nice Thursday night. No, maybe he, he was. He's an alumnus. Ah, there he is. He was goes. on that '87 team. He gets special treatment getting to hang out down on the sidelines. He probably so. got in free too. So well, I can't really say anything about that. Man, these guys are off sides every time on a kickoff. And that one's going to trickle into the Terrible. end zone. Woo. That was a bold <laughs> choice, bold choice. But I mean, he's down there. He can see the spin on that ball. He's got a better feel for it than we do up here. But man, that was a a that was a gamble. Players were all sides on that play for Huron. And I think maybe he was hoping it was going to bounce. Out. I mean, I guess he's thinking this is either going out of bounds or going in the end zone. Yeah, but he was one bounce away from that Huron rat scooping it up. And that's a live ball. I mean, so it's not like he's going to down it. That's going to be a touchdown if the rat gets in there and grab that ball. Well, and you accurately said some of those rats had a nice head start on that. They were coming in hot. All right, 2.24 to go here in this first half. Pioneer down by 11, but they've shown a proclivity to make big plays as well. Yeah, Wong has been using his arm. Um, and he's been, he really still hasn't found Farha. And Farha can make this game change, make it be split. And no sooner said than done, Malik Farha brings that one in for about three, four yards. Good play to get that clock running, as well as being positive down the field. Clock down just under two minutes now. Both squads with two timeouts, so Coach Briggs can move this ball down the field as well as use those timeouts. There's Wong rolling to his left, and he finds Farha, fires it in there off of Farha's mitts. I don't think I've ever hands. seen that happen. <laughs> That's like an eclipse. I mean, you really you hear about it, but you don't see it. I mean, this, I mean, Farha doesn't drop these too often. I mean, and that was a nice pass coming in there. Interesting right, play, right. the way that uh, Wong had to roll out. He's running to his left. He's making that throw cross body-ish, and he still fired it where it needed to be. Farhad just couldn't bring that one in. Maybe thinking about what he was going to do after the catch a little too early. This might be the biggest play of the game so far for the Pioneers. Third and eight upcoming. Play action, misdirection. Wong to his right, looking deep, looking for Brabs, looking for someone up the middle. That wasn't Brabs. Oh, did he catch it? Did he come down with that ball? Because it looked like eight, was it 18 on the catch? That was 18, or was it a catch? Mm -hmm. 
wrong again, keeping his head downfield. And look at what that touch on the ball. Scary throw, though, to throw it back against him. And wow, great job there. And that looks like that was Quinn Stevens, number six again, putting his paw on uh, making that ball fall out of bounds. And indeed a catch, no doubt about it. You see it on that replay. He made the catch, came down, turned the old football move. And first down and, and a fortunate recovery for the Pioneers. They're still in business, 138 to go. That's a toss left to Lage. And he's going to make it outside and pick up a few. Get over there, officials. Double L running to the top side of the screen, and he's quick. I mean, when he gets this ball, you saw Burkhart come down on the block. Then he released to the top side, but then easily comes in and lays some big wood and takes out Coach Thompson. Coach, Tom, Coach TJ Thompson has not been taken down like that since he's been in Little League. No, Coach got taken out hard. That head came down hard. He's tough, though. He's up. He's ready to go. Yeah, he's offensive Nine coordinator. Plus. He's been exactly around for right. a while. Long back now throwing that uh, uh, timing pass. Tried to get to the outside, but I think a little miscommunication there between him and El Kakani. Long was going right to the sideline, and El Kakani was still a little closer to the hash marks at that point. Yeah, I, I think if El Kakani could have located the ball and, and been on the same page, that, that play had a great opportunity of being successful. Wong could really see where the opening of the defense was at. He really threw to the open area. Third and four upcoming now. Everybody looking into the sideline, the old sideline play. I'm curious if you might see some sort of naked bootleg here by Wong. Get, well, the, get him off big, and running. I, I, I almost think there might be a run play called right here just to keep this clock moving. Play action to Lage. Goes outside looking for Brabs. Brabs, did he catch that or was that knocked away? It was in his hands at one point. Looks like the official's marking it right there. He's marking that as a catch. Let's see. This is all, oh, now they're going to have the old, the old conference. The conference, the confab. They're calling it a catch, but we only have the replay. Let's take a look. Because that was bang, bang. Good throw here. Another dark. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the hey, Pioneers can you yell got out the window. Nowhere near a catch. I he didn't even he didn't even have control of the ball. The Pioneers benefit from this call, and they're still moving forward now. That'll be another first down for them with 118 to go. Farha in motion, moving to Wong's left. Wong looking left almost the entire way, and now he's going right, and he's going to pick up. If not a first down, he's awfully close. And now with two timeouts, you're, you're, you're right on the doorstep of being just a little bit away from field goal range for the kicker uh, for the Pioneers, doing a great job of, of converting on third down and getting a little bit of help from the officials. Pioneers have still got a minute 11 to go here in this uh, second quarter. They're not thinking field goal at all. That's not even on their radar right now because of the way that they've been throwing, because of the plays that they've been running here in this first half. Only thing that uh, I would question is, uh, is Long sometimes throwing the ball late over his body in the middle of the field. But other than that, his ball placement has been spot on. Right, on the move, whether he's been uh, set either way, he's been on the move an awful lot on uh, this drive, though. And even a heady play there where he saw in, taking a sack would keep that clock running. Uh, you know, nowadays you can get outside the tackle box and throw the ball into the stands. Smart play there by the QB. Yeah, Wong, Wong's mature. He makes good decisions. You don't see him tossing up bad balls very often. You saw how he surveyed the field. He began looking to his left, went to his second receiver, didn't see either of them open, and tried to gain something positive. And when nothing can be positive made out of the play, you throw it away to fight another down. Second and 10 now. Long shotgun looking out, but he is going to, he loses a man, loses a man, loses his helmet. Plays over, plays over. 
Wong wants to keep playing, but uh, when you lose your lid in high school, the play is over right there. It's dead. Completely nonplussed. He would have played that thing with no helmet, no pants. He was just ready to, he was go. Ready to go. But it's, it's a player safety call there, and great call by the officials. I can give them a little bit of rubbing when they make poor calls, and I'll give you a little bit of pause. And they're call calling the, the face mask. I mean, his helmet didn't just pop off by itself. You sure? <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, they finally get one of these face mask calls correct. Yeah, I, I think that right, I mean, I think you'll see that that right hand was the one that brought right it down. Let's see it in Super Slow again, because again, yeah. Yeah, it's in there. This is it's in there, and I'm thinking that that's what ripped the, uh, the, the helmet off. It came off, off clean. i got to say that. It's real tough to see that. I mean, it's tough to see that from where we're at. It's, it had to have been a tough angle down on the field as well, nonetheless. Especially when you're behind the player. I gotta drop my phone when I say that, because I mean, wow. 58 seconds to go now. Wong back. He's looking end zone. He's got a man, He's He's got got a man, man. into the corner, but caught. Your hands in the air. Ocean grabs. Touchdown is signaled, and the Pioneers answer. That was a drive. Too small was the sign we're seeing from the Pioneers down there, Burkhart. But I tell you what, what a drop. That ball, I mean, we're seeing some outstanding play in the Ted Heisel Bowl. And this pass here by Kayla Wong, oh, I love, he said his time. You see him pat the rock before he lets it go. He knows exactly where he needs to put it. Ball was bobbled slightly, but all you need is one foot in. You're making a touchdown. Yeah, Wong knew that he just need he knew that he just needed these couple of seconds, these couple of moments for him to get that ball to exactly where he needed it to. He got those couple of moments from that offensive line and threw it exactly where he needed to be. And Ocean Brabs did not disappoint. We haven't seen <laughs> you see it through the trombones and everything else there. It just comes out of I mean, look at this. Out of the air, out of nowhere, right? <laughs> he just appears. He just appears between the band. <laughs> Perfectly placed camera work by everyone down there. Well, I mean, we've got another timeout on an extra point. I haven't seen so many timeouts on extra points. Uh, I mean, and you definitely know you're going for two, right? I mean, you're down yeah, five. Yeah, you're down you're five. You got to go, go for two. two. For sure. I mean, I don't even need that play card they used to have back in the day. When do you go for two to figure that one out? But I tell you. The way that the Pioneer team has responded in the second quarter, I mean, this is like a boxing match right now. Round for round, they're just trading blows. Back and forth, back and forth, as advertised. <laughs> and ready to go <laughs> down there. Right. Trombones have moved out. I want to get one of those Grand Puba hats they have down there. Maybe we can work on that. You get you get me one of those sweet yellow hoodies. I can get you one of those hats. We can we can make something happen nice. here tonight. Oh, on the ground. That one hit the turf and play had no chance to get started. Pioneers do not convert on the two point conversion. And a little extra juice at the end there once again. Well, why not? I mean, especially coming into halftime, 21 is supposed to he's, he's probably more upset at himself than he didn't drag that ball. Uh, I mean, it looks like he comes up with it. But at the same time, Burkhardt uh, gave some business. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a lot of foot on a lot of ankle, right? And the calf is... Does it feel good? I can feel that up here. That doesn't feel those good. Those are the little things in between the plays in these type of games that occur. I mean, you, you, I mean, you got to ask one of the linemen down there where you punch. I'm sure an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman on either side is going to say, I'll punch. I mean, because in this game, they're pushing the limits. Well, you're completely right about that. They're, they're walking right up to that line and just maybe dipping a toe over the line, seeing how it goes. Dipping a toe like these guys coming up to just like cross. that. Yeah. And that's once again not Brabs on this kick. Oh, I love this. Bounce from the Haven. See, that ball is tough. That ball is tough to win. Clearly, the, the, the evidence is stated right there. Really tough to come up with. Bounces off a man initially. Looks like 
kicker wanted to kick it. And they got it. But they <laughs> never kick it on the first try. Was know, he surprised? I mean, you got to tell 36. He was like, hey, man, I wanted to kick this one. I was, yeah, it was, I was in the moment. I was about to kick it. Well, I guess you're the kicker. The kick it, man. <laughs> you do you, man. And here's that, that, that bounce. Got right off his shoulders. Then there's another guy that comes into it. And, 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 and even sometimes you have on those gloves, uh, the ball is still slippery, especially when you're trying to really get it before the defender gets to you. And it is getting a little chillier out there. Sun is long gone. Harding now looking deep. Man up in the middle, knocked Whoa, away though by Al Kakani. Yeah, Harding just, man, that big arm steps back and tosses it deep, but he didn't really have anybody out there. My wallet is on the field. That. I'm, I'm wondering why the I, people are knocking on the window up here, and I'm like, I'm doing a broadcast, man. And then I would have went and bought my pizza after this, and it's like, where's my wallet? Probably got a lot of money in there too. Somewhere. When you say from your paycheck from this uh, game? Wow, I'm not gonna do that. Harding again slips a man, still looking way deep. He wants to go deep. Again. He wants it. Again. He wants it. He chucks that way deep. One man, but no, that is picked off by the Pioneers, almost uh, kick return style. And then you know, some extracurriculars going on. Looks like Dyson Sims wasn't too happy about that. Going back to the sideline. Look at that. I still it's all in there. You got your cash got in, there. in there. And all I wanted was my idea. There. Just a bunch of honest people down there well, on that River Red sideline. It's in here. And here we see Harding once again drop back. He's going to move to his right and then yeah, try to look deep. Down. Yeah, probably. Harding is tough to bring down, but then he lost that ball. You saw it slip totally out of his hands when he tried to throw it. That's why it came back. It like a punch. Yeah, that, that came up probably 10, 12 yards short of where he was looking initially. And you're right, that slipped out. And if, if that is fully gripped and sent where he wanted it to, at worst, that's a jump ball between two people, like his guy and another guy. Now 33 seconds to go. We'll see if the Pioneers can make something happen, maybe get within field goal range here. They're definitely looking downfield. Long finds his man, but Whoa! that one is picked off. One-handed knockdown pickoff, and the River Rats answer with an interception of their own. Santana Jones? Okay, I'll go with that. I mean, that is an amazing pick by Jones. Watch him tip the ball to himself. And that was the first poor throw by Wong. And it didn't even look like it was just underthrown, really. I mean, maybe slightly underthrown, but you said it. That was a great job of Jones to get up, got that right hand out there, knocked it down to himself. I mean, he almost brought that down one-handed. Man. And now the River Rats have a chance with 21 seconds. You'll see if they're going to try to make him maybe make another long throw. Going to try to hand it off to Easley. Well, yeah, what, both what do you do? The Rats have big arms. Yeah. So throw the ball deep and see what happens. I think they heard you. Harding makes a man miss, looking around for it, but instead he's going to keep it himself. He's met by a few pioneers. I mean, he was so far back behind the line of scrimmage, though. I mean, it seemed like he was running forever on that play, but he, if he got the first down, it was just barely. That, that I mean, in his feet, I mean, Hardy, his feet have saved him so much this, uh, this evening. Uh, to get him to a point to even look downfield, uh, watches how he just weaves his way through the Pioneer defense and finds a way to make something out of nothing. He almost slipped through again. I mean, if he could have got away from the clutches of 38 there, he was ready to spin away and go away from us again, go towards uh, his sideline and try to make another break for it. Good job there by Sims coming in to help out his QB. Didn't want everybody to pile up on him. And got, again, uh, are we oh, I was wondering, are, there's are we the following X. Twitter or are there we following X? There is the X, Twitter, X, X Twitter. All the social sure medias, like and videos, it's it really is incredible how quickly this crew gets these things turned around to go up on YouTube. 
you know, usually within 24 hours. It is impressive. Oh, definitely. This will be up tomorrow morning when you're what, eating your cereal, watching this game again, saying, man, I remember I was there just a couple hours ago. And wow, that's right. These kids are not going to have school for the next year, right? Something like that, roughly. All right, Harding now from the shotgun. He's got five streaking down wide. Uh, yeah, I don't think he even thought not? about throwing it. Just puts, it, puts his head down, makes a run, gets out of bounds with one second to go. Really heads up play. And now whether you take a shot at the end zone or you're trying to kick a field goal here, either are manageable for the River Rats. Well, with you, you being up, Heron did receive the kick. So they, they're definitely not going to get the ball to start the second half. This is a big call here for Coach Love. They do have a timeout in hand, so we might want to see what the Pioneers come out in and then call that timeout. Yeah, that's that's a that's a really smart chess play right there. See, can't take see what happens. The half that's right. That's right. Yeah, can't, can't carry him over. And actually, you're going to see Coach Briggs do that. So yeah, so I mean, along the same lines, Coach Briggs will go out there, see what their offense looks like, and then try to counter that one way or another. Uh, you know, you want to have at least one spy on Harding because he has shown he has no problem putting his head down, putting the ball down, and just running it up the gut and making guys miss. So you want to have one or two oh, line and linebackers <laughs> keyed in on Harding, but. Right, like you, you can't have them just sitting back there True that. because he's shown that he can fire those passes in and that he's got the arm to make that low line drive pass into the end zone. And, and, and Harding, you're right, he's too full. Cool. If you're Pioneer, you definitely have to be alert for the scramble, uh, but don't let anybody behind you. I know it's only 30 yards down the field um, with that end zone, but don't let anybody behind you because We've seen Hardy with a quick flick of the wrist get that ball down there in a hurry. And there it is, high throw into the corner, but that is met by a pioneer, and that will do it for first half action. I love saying first half action and really meaning it because this one has been back and forth the entire game, and everybody stick around because who knows what we're going to see in the second half on CTN Sports Game of the Week. I am Dave, and this is Tom, and those things you see underneath, they're lies. It's all lies, except for the film, which is the one to go. And it's Very premiering at the Michigan Theater on the 29th of October. Citizens of Ann Arbor get a chance to express your thoughts and opinions on issues of concern to you. Access Soapbox is brought to you as a public service of Ann Arbor Community Access Television. Hi, I'm Liz Nolan Margolis from the Ann Arbor Transportation Authority, inviting you to ride free during the month of April. You can ride AATA bus Route 1U or 5C during. year of the Carn Nation. And we have planned a three-day celebration beginning with our black tie banquet on Friday. With you for the month of May, something exciting is going to happen. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about Power. Power is a, like I said, a faith-based agency.
I don't even need a reason to want to see Weisinger in net. True, that guy is good. I can't believe it. Hello, my name's Brittany Kern, and I work for the Teen Center with him. 101st Airborne banner on the wall, a whole bunch of military paraphernalia.
This rhythm and blues classic became the Queen of Soul signature song and was listed on Rolling Stone magazine's list of 500 greatest songs of all time. Put your hands together and sing along with respect. Jackson Fine became American culture icons during the 60s and 70s. Jackson Media spread across the country with number one hits like Gotta Be There and I Want You Back. The rhythm rap marching back continues their journey by performing two of Jackson Fine's number one hits. I'll be there at ABC.
becoming the duo's best-selling single today, and won them a Grammy for best R&B vocal performance by the group at the 14th annual Grammy Awards. Dana Denha here, and this is Let's Watch with the Ann Arbor Film Festival. Ann Arbor's annual film festival celebrates arts and artists of mediums of all kinds. In 2015, CTN really partnered with the world-renowned Ann Arbor Film really Festival, incredible. creating Let's Watch with the Ann Arbor Film Festival, a space for filmmakers. Filmmaking was really what I enjoyed doing. Performance and installation artists and creators of all kinds to share insights into their works leading up to this right, annual so festival. Just, just become like a symbol, but that's actually a, a living, breathing person. Destroyed as um, these, these different sort of like gentrification forces moved in. So to say real females. How we are supposed to, you know, talk about our bodies or, or, or talk, uh, or be, how, how we're supposed to view ourselves as worthy, no matter what our, uh, sexual history is. I'm Dana Denha for Let's Watch with the Ann Arbor Film Festival. Welcome back everybody to CTN Sports Game of the Week, second half action. Too. I do, you really mean I this do. Week. Second half action, just getting ready to go. Kevin Bryant, can you sum up that first half for us? Woo! Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, both teams showed 
a, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement to get down into the end zone, a lot of poor tackling, and a lot of poor special teams play uh, from both sides. And we looked over the records from both teams, four and three heading into this. Both teams have only beat the same squads. So <laughs> they, they, they're definitely even Steven. That's why we have such a close score going into the second half. Yeah, something's got to give here as far as that goes. But yeah, resilience from both teams. You can see one team go, you know, score, maybe on a big play. It's really easy to hang your head and walk away and slump your shoulders. But both of these offenses are really firing on all cylinders. Defenses are making some strong tackles uh, when needed. So the back and forth resilience for both of these teams has been really nice, really nice back and forth game here for us tonight. And there's Al Kakani receiving the second half kickoff. Still moving forward, big scrum before he's brought down to the 38 yard line. Al Kakani really had a lot of energy, a little bit too much energy on a couple penalties in the first half, but he showed running style just like he did on that kick return where he's hard to bring down on the first contact. He likes to break tackles. Yeah, you, I mean, you mentioned special teams. El Kakani is one of the bright spots for this Pioneer team. I mean, just all season long we've seen him, even, even in the face of much adversity against other squads, El Kakani can make things happen. Well, he even got that last interception off of Harding Day in the first half. Wong now with a man behind him, almost a I formation set up there. Fake and then given to Lage. Lage gets to the outside. Trucks a man before he's knocked out of bounds. And he, I'm sorry, that's not Lage, that's Farha. Farha, and we talked about how slight building he is, but watch him drop a shoulder here at the end of this play and let the Huron River Red player know uh, this is gonna be a long second half. This is the way you'd like to start the second half if you're Coach Griggs. He dropped that kid. Took that hit with everything he had and just kept moving forward. Great play. First down for Far High. First down for Pi High on that first play of this second half. A lot of motion, a lot of movement on that play as well, too. Again, we talked about how Coach Griggs' offense causes confusion for the River Red defense, and just like that. There's Wong. Double play action, he rolls out to his right, looking deep, but there's nobody down there. And he's just gonna scamper out of bounds and call that one a day and send back there for second down. This looks like this is one of the special plays Pioneer has been saving up, and they, they, they had it uh, saved for the second half, but it was some good coverage downfield for the River Reds, because that was a definitely covered set. Great coverage, right you are. And we saw the River Rats in that first few uh, series defensively in the first half really seemed to have the Pioneers number. And the Pioneers had to adjust, do some different things, get some misdirection going on, get a lot of motion going on to confuse that, that gaggle of linebackers there for the River Rats. And now it seems like maybe Huron has made some adjustments from that and Pioneer will have to adjust accordingly. Ooh. And there was a rip down right down the middle. Big tackle and pull down there. That's uh, Lamar Ashford, I believe. Oh, yeah, and Ashford got a full pounty. He took away the block. You see 56 getting up there? That was because of Ashford trucked him. A Ashford is just a big kid. He just ran one arm initially and makes the stop, and then he wraps him up and uses his entire body to bring him down. Just no chance for Lidge to go anywhere. And he's built like a nose guard. No neck, just all thickness. <laughs> Third and 11 now, Wong rolls to his left, has a man cutting to the sideline, hits him, but there is a flag down out there as well. So we'll see what comes with that. But in the meantime, he hit Farha for, if not a first down, an awfully close. Can't do that. Those, those things, I tell you, are, 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 are 
are, are fixable, right? Third and 16 now. Everybody looking into the offensive coordinator. Long now the man to his left. He just steps back. Now. And then he gets brought down. Just no time to do anything. He's get brought down by two River Rats in the backfield. And a sputtering first series of plays for the Pioneers. Yeah, Jackson and Easley on the tackle there. And it looks like Pioneers were getting that play, just barely got that play off. A little bit of confusion going on. And not a lot of blocking up front. A little bit of lookout blocks going on by the offensive line. 58's going to have to have a chat on the sideline. He had a poor series. Yeah, Wong didn't have a lot of time to do really anything on that series. And now the Pioneers will punt that one away. High spiral punt bounces out of bounds. Check and the River Rats. He had his arms out to the side like, get away from this ball. And <laughs> no more of those plays that we saw in the first half. And, and that was a good job there. Who was that? Angelo Rivera taking control at that point, right? Just said, <laughs> he's in charge. Well, you, you definitely know that had that. to be a part of the conversation at halftime from Coach Love. We have to clean up some of these special team blunders because they're, they're really, we're stepping ourselves in the foot. And here we can see some of the other games Blowout on our Central. slate. If you jump back to the YouTube and you watch some of these games, uh, not exactly what one would call back and forth. Unlike tonight, which has been, as we've said, a pleasure to call and a pleasure to see. Three points the, the, the defenses have. Come on, man. Look at what the offenses have done, and look at what the defenses have done out there. That's a big difference. Not tonight, though. Tonight, a completely different bag of tricks. And here's a bag of tricks by the kidding? River Rats. Gets out of it. I, he looked like he was ready to go down, but nonetheless, breaks free and finds pay dirt in the end zone. Quinn Stevens with another River Rat touchdown for the home faithful. And again, another splash play for the Rats. They, uh, that first drive of the game, they had a long drive down the field. But outside of that, it's just been really poor tackling. Al Kakani had him wrapped up, but he looked like he was trying to strip the ball as opposed to bring the runner down. Well, and I think part of the problem with some of those uh, defensive backs is they thought that he was down a couple of times, and, and you could see that their heads popped up when and that was not the case. Yeah, and, and if we, if, I think we may have that one from one more angle, Nick, but uh, you can see that Stevens was surrounded by pioneers. More than one pioneer pioneer could have had a shot at making a tackle there. But that just speaks to what these River Rats have done tonight, whether it's whether it's Stevens, whether it's Easley, whether it's Harding, whoever it is, these kids are not giving up. They refuse to go down. They refuse to go down easily when they do go down. So there's there's been a lot of strong runs here by the River Rats. And when tonight. you take a look at this, Nick, you can see this is definitely coaching here. Because Al Kakani comes up and he's trying to strip the ball right here. You can see him jumping on the ball. He's tackling up high. No one else went down down to Steven's legs, and he just kept turning those big, thick legs of his, and he's going down the sideline. He's not just fast, he's a big kid to bring down. Exactly right. Exactly right. That's, that's the type of player that you want in your offense, but also the nice complimentary player as well. We've seen Harding go back and throw deep, and, and then we've seen him, them run the ball with Stevens. We've seen him run the ball with Easley. So a really balanced attack when you've got all these different weapons. Coach Love talks about points put butts in the seats, and man, they're showing it off tonight. River Rats 12-point lead now as they kick away. El Kakani doesn't come up with that one cleanly. Nonetheless, gets it and comes back up, but he's going to be just going for that ball. taken down at about the 23-yard line. And that's a double-edged sword for Pioneer about losing the ball and then giving up a big splash play like this. I mean, from what Huron was just running the ball, looked like a, a normal play that was going to go down. And Stevens just breaks tackle after tackle. Well, you saw a couple of Pioneers there. Instead of going for the wrap-up tackle, they were going for the ball. And then when they didn't get it, when, when Stevens spun away from it, 
I mean, he just left those kids in the dust. And Stevens actually even had the ball in the wrong hand. If you look at that replay, he had it in the hand closest to the defenders. It didn't matter. Yeah, you're not going to tell him that. He's like, hey, man, I got in the end zone. It's, it wasn't the correct hand. Long now to the shotgun. Three wide left. Easy pass over to his man, but he is met about halfway to the 30-yard line, brought down hard. I think Jackson came in on that tackle 23 and finished him off, and that was a big, big hit. He tried to make some moves, but neither one of those defenders were going for it. One and went he took low and one went high. <laughs> That's hard to, hard to shake that off. Four-yard gain on the play. Wong over to Lage. Lage about to the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up a third down here for the Pioneers. And I've said this before, but this again is another big third down because of momentum. Momentum is now shifting over to the Riverette sideline after that touchdown. And these big splash plays, they're, they're not hard. I mean, not, not easy to get over if you're the Pioneers. So and here's my one thought so far from what we've seen on the River Rats so far defensively in this half. Multiple guys making tackles. There's not just one guy on an island or needing one person. You're seeing multiple rats making tackles. And you almost see them there stripped from Wong, but that one's fallen on by Lage. He comes up and cleans that one up, but that is a big, big play from the River Rats. Yeah, and Wong right now needed some eyes behind his head because the rats are just coming. It's a rack pack right there. And great defense of stripping that ball. And uh, was that Stevens 52? Yep. Yeah, Stevens was on his case. He had another player coming up right behind him. Wong had nowhere to go and just no time to let the play develop the way he needs it to because of the way this rat defense is just all over the place. They're swarming. High the punt is going to bounce right at the 50. Get down to about the 40-yard line. Still not terrible position for the River Rats here. And it might be a flag on the play uh, or a sideline violation. It looks like the officials are trying to hold the chains. And uh, lead officials on the Pioneer sideline trying to work things out. Usually, this could be a sideline uh, violation or a warning. Oh, that looks like they're pointing to Coach Griggs to see where he wants to move the ball. Can't really see the call it was on here on, but it looks like it was a climb. Was it a face mask? Because it, it, it looked like the official pulled up one hand. So, but a face mask still wouldn't have given you a first down. It was it was fourth and forever. Right, that would right. So the Rats will start scrimmaging from their 40-yard line, and there's some River Rat faithful. The, just the, the green gang out there. Yeah, you know, doing the meme game or doing a little tiki taki video. <laughs> I'm sure Game of the Week will be on TikTok before long. Now the Rats with uh, all of the momentum on their side can really take a hold of this game with the score here. Another handoff up the gut, Quinn Stevens again. Like, hey man, you got uh, got the touchdown on that last one. We're gonna keep feeding you. Kind of looked like the same call as well. Yeah, <laughs> it went to the same side, and uh, just a big scrum there for Pioneer. But they definitely weren't trying to just grab the football. Off tackle, right side there. Ball on the turf. And everybody in white says, we've got that ball. And that's going to be pie high football. And they're going to get a chance to turn this around down 12 points. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Pioneers. I mean, who gets a hand in here on easily? Because he's got the ball high and tight. It looks like coming in on the tackle was at 38. Jumped on his back and caused the fumble. But great job there from the pioneers of never giving up because that momentum meter was just starting to gain, gain, gain more energy for the Riverettes. 
but now the onus is on the Pioneers to, to try to get something going Capitalize. offensively. We haven't seen a, a, a lot of big – we haven't seen any big plays for them this half, but we haven't seen them really get their offense going quite yet. So you'll wonder if you'll start to see something a little bit different, if they're going to go to the bread and butter, little handoff to start things off. Long there outside Scary to their half. Pass. Oh, God, that looked like it was picked off all day long, right? I mean, it looked like he was throwing directly to one of the Huron uh, defenders here. If we can see it on this play, look at this. He knew it was yeah, right, I mean, over Brad. right over him. Right over him. When you've got that big target like Ocean Brad yeah, out there, you know that you can throw that high. It was well over that first defender. But you're right, when you're down on the field, and Wong's not a big kid to get it, get that, that proper arc throw, over him. That's a tight window. Yeah. That is a tight window. Long now to his left. He's brought down from behind. I'm not sure if he ever saw it. He may be hurt, too. That's Elijah. He easily, easily came, came down, down on him hard. hard. <laughs> yeah, he might have to take a playoff. It looks like uh, Long's a little bit woozy getting up after that play. Easily had a big head of steam off the top side. Watch him on the jump. Nobody touches him. And I don't think Wong ever saw him coming, and, and he just brought him down real easy. And Wong got his bell rung, got easy. knocked out. He has so much length on him with arms and legs. I mean, he just he just reached out and bear hugged the quarterback on that play. Now third and nine upcoming for the Pioneers. Wong does stay in there from the shotgun. Three left, one right. Lage coming out of the backfield, and he's got his man, Lage, oh, right through his hands. But there looked like there might have been a penalty on Wong. It looked like Wong got it taken. He got taken down after the end of the play. That was a cheap shot, really, too, by the, um, by the River Rat player, because Wong had let the ball go, and he took two steps before he unleashed some wood on Wong. And it's plays like that that here I can ill afford to, to make. Right, we've talked about those those mistakes, those uh, unnecessary mistakes. And here you see Wong waits, waits it out, makes the perfect pass in delayed. But Ooh. just at the end of that, you could see, like you said, he got hit way after that ball was out of his hands. And that's two plays in a row that Wong's bell's been rung. So that it looks like, are we getting a timeout here? Um, not sure what sideline took the timeout, but... That, that's perfect for Wong to get a couple extra breathers uh, before he gets back out there on the field because he's taken some wood and some big hits the last two plays. Yeah, get a, get a chance for Wong to come over there to the sideline, uh, shake the cobwebs loose, and, and refocus. Get some deep breaths, get a little bit of water. and yeah, <laughs> Get a little water, they hurt you. I mean, get that guy a couple Gatorade bottles the way he's been throwing the ball as well, too. Yeah, just also, anything to splash on his face. Also gives your, 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 your offensive line a little bit more time to take a breather as well, too. Yeah, we can again see that uh, that ball's well out of his hands, yeah, and he's, not, he's not blindsided needed. by that. That hit was not needed. It's hard in high school because you don't have the same type of rules that you have in college and pro. There's a little bit more contact on the quarterback allowed, but you can't take two steps. No, too, too much there, and he got knocked down. And uh, that will result in a pioneer first down where, I mean, they were looking third and long after that. Uh, it, it and keeps them in the game. Good pass, exactly it right. keeps this game wide open for Pioneer. Long sticks in, hands that one to Farha. Farha makes a move to the outside. Maybe picks up a couple there. Yeah, and we haven't said his name enough tonight. I like, I mean, Farha, the way we've seen him, his antics um, in the last couple of weeks have just been crazy that uh, we haven't seen him get the ball in the end zone. I mean, every time we've seen him through the air, through the ground, the water, I don't know. The kid is scoring everywhere. He brings a lot to the table, and it's it's interesting to see the different ways that the coaches use him here. You see him in the uh, slot receiver now, Wong's left. Wong puts that one on the turf, but still manages to pick it back up and slide up through the middle, and he won't go down now. He is taking a beating out there, Wong is. But I, I think that play was a quick pass going over to Farha. And you can see Farha on the other, because you can see Wong was turning to his left. He's still looking that way. Farha ran a quick out, 
from that slot position. And it looked like he may have been open. And uh, Wong was just a little, you got to take that, you got to get the snap before um, he can do anything. You can see Wong is not feeling up to par, it looks like, down there. No, kudos, kudos to Kalen Wong for keep gutting this out, right? Like, oh, I mean, man. He's, he, he put that one on the turf, barely missed a beat. He has his head up looking for his man to the left he, almost before he's got the ball in his, in his hands ready to go. Looks like he drew an offsides to a heady play by the QB. We have a flag on the field. Boy, uh, Aaron is uh, losing not just composure. <laughs> they're, they're losing field position, momentum, and all of those big plays. They're just getting chipped away by the sloppy play that they're doing out there on the field. Well, the Rats defense has been out there an awful lot in this second half so far. Yeah, I wonder how much they charge the kids that wear pink. You gotta go out and buy pink gloves, cause they've gotta just. Yeah, they've gotta have. It's those. in the budget. Yeah. Maybe they can get some new windows. On there. Wong finds his man to the outside, and that'll be a first down for the Pioneers. See Wong looking for that play the whole way. Nice curl back catch and then curls out of bounds. That is Micah Powell on the reception. We've called his name a few, well, we've called 18 a few times, but now we have confirmation Micah Powell. I mean, and we've, we've seen him multiple times this year as well. Exactly, exactly. Wong again scrambling for his life, a position we've seen him in all too much on this drive, but he still managed to turn it around and make a throw. And still took another big hit after the end of that play. Uh, luckily for the River Rats that uh, not penalized on that play, right to the bench, because you can see both Coach Griggs and Coach Eastman down there screaming that the Huron player uh, landed directly on and kind of rolled Wong into the dirt. Yeah, Wong, here you can see, I mean, just look at that pocket collapse in, and that entire left side is all over him. It's like Johnny he, Manziel. He thinks to turn back to the right, but there's nothing doing there. Smart play, though. Throw it into the stands, let him play another down. Yep, launched it out of there, no big deal. Second and ten now. Now is Wong with a little extra, a little more time than lately, but still decides to put it down in his arms and make a run for it. I think the Rats have gone and switched to playing a lot more man coverage here in the second half, and which has opened up those running lanes for Wong, and he's exploiting. Again, both quarterbacks, you, you got to uh, play them until the end of the play because if you allow them to scramble, their feet find, uh, find an opening. Yeah, dual threats for uh, both these quarterbacks. And, and both these quarterbacks have shown great poise back in the pocket and, and making things happen, sometimes out of nothing, as we've seen from both these kids. And Wong, once again, nothing happening in front of him except a whole bunch of rats, oh. and he's brought down from behind, and that is textbook Horace Collard. Yeah, you can see Coach Thompson over there talking. Uh, is that Sharma? That's 51. Big blitz right up the middle from Stevens, unable to grab Wong. But who's this on the edge? That's 21. Wow. Adam Wong. Meredith, I believe. Wong luckily got his foot from up underneath him, or he could have been bent backwards on that play. And just more punishment that Wong has taken on this drive, but he's leading his squad. That's exactly what I was he's about to say. Leading his squad, and he's got to definitely have the the team rallying around all of the positive plays because he has he's scrambling for his life on a lot of these snaps, and he's still taking nothing and making it into something and not having a second or a third and long. Also, being heady enough to throw the ball away. He's earning his Gatorade. <laughs> He's earning his Gatorade. That's a new one. I like it. 
I like it. And then on the other side, you've got this River Rat defense that, I mean, they are performing. The fact that they've given up these yards on this drive is one thing, but I mean, that defensive line is after the quarterback every single time. Those defensive backs, they're covering their men as well, but they have less to show for it. And I think you're hitting on a point I want to bring up is the, the this timeout is really maybe helping that Huron defense catch a win. You know, the quick turnover got them back out on the field, and Pioneer has them thinking on every play with the variety of the playbook and Wong extending plays, making defensive linemen and defensive backs run all over the field. And first and goal to go for the Pioneers from about the nine yard line. There's the handoff to Farhar, who you've been calling for this whole drive, but he gets a pounding midsection. Whoa. The Elmore, Azar Elmore comes up and I haven't seen this before, but you got to guess in the right spot. And you got to have more than one person bring Farha down because he didn't have anywhere to go. And that is one more time we've seen multiple rats in on the tackle. It's not just one guy. It's not just one person launching their body at him. Like you said, Elmore went low and he had his compa uh, compatriot behind him going high and they stopped Farha dead in his tracks. And now we've got Lage uh, wide formation. deep back. Oh, the QB tush push. Keeper. The tush push. Brotherly loved it. So they're practicing that, I'm con one, one would assume. Uh, it, I mean, there's, there's just a lot of different thoughts and a lot of different theories on that play. The, but there wasn't mayhem in the middle of the field. It looked like it was still too much space in between. Yeah, that was, that was less of that, that scrum and just more of a... a a modified QB keeper kind of push. And that was a long QB keeper as well, too. That was from the four-yard line, three yard, the third, the three-yard line. So, And they got one yard. They're down to about the two-yard line here. I'm um, going to go out on the limb and say this is for four down two. Oh, yeah, down 12. You're not kicking any field goals out here. Only 35 seconds to go here in this third quarter, this fast-moving third quarter. There's the handoff to Lage. Lage is going outside. He dives and... Touchdown, pie high. Now, Page gives up the ball right to the official that time. He didn't have to even pull that. And the Pioneer sideline again, the energy is rising. There's Lage pulling left, and he makes a man miss and just. Who just that barely out, keeps right? those feet in there. He had all stop? that momentum going outside. An excellent job of that body contortion and body control to shift that momentum just enough to slow down and then fall forward and get into the pylon end zone. And that is a kick, one, just one point, extra point. But there is a flag on the play. We can't get we'll out see of these special here. teams without a flag. And, 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 and they're talking to the officials. Uh, the officials that mean are talking to Huron, so it must be a pioneer. Pioneers aren't interested in that. They're already ready for their kickoff. Doesn't even look like they're going to call the fiddle. Oh, here it comes. Here's the Personal foul on Huron. That's going to back them up. That's going to back them up on this kick and give them poor field position and maybe an opportunity for Pioneer to do that fake kick and just do a go ahead onside kick off of it Nick come on now right I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the head fake brings but as of right now 38 34 I believe or sorry 33 it's 38 32 I don't think they didn't they did they just haven't put up the last point after yet because they were down after? 12 they scored and it went through yeah it looks like or maybe I'm wrong I could be wrong you can't be wrong get out of here <laughs> Ted Hines Take is fixing it. up the That's scoreboard right. oh. you can still do an kick onside kick there. here look at the field position you're kicking off the 45 yard line right Bounce that ball in the air. 
Oh, and he kicked, kicked it deep. away. He put his entire leg into that. His leg I and everything that. else. I don't get Just that. Just gone. I mean, so. <laughs> you can bounce that ball down there in the way that the Huron River Rats have been letting that ball slip through fingertips. I wouldn't allow them to just set up on the 20-yard line and get going. Looks like there's some confusion going on out there as well, too. Coach Griggs trying to get everything set up. He's pointing. Are they trying to get the scoreboard fixed? It looks like they're trying to get the score correct. <laughs> Back to the shot of the scoreboard trying to Can figure we get out it fixed? exactly where we're at there. And with 25 seconds to go here in this third quarter, it appears that this play will run. Well, we had mark. 20 heads. We had 26, right? It's 26 38. So yes. you get six points. Yes. 32. Then? Oh, extra point that doesn't go through? <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. It, no, the, yeah, the kick went through. Yeah, something, something's not right. Now. It looks like the officials are trying to fix it right now. They're on the sideline for Heron, and they're looking up towards the press box, so. And they're looking back at the scoreboard. Well, they need to look up at this press box. We figured this we out five this. minutes ago. You, you had this. I told you you couldn't be wrong. <laughs> I mean, here you go. You're trying to say. <laughs> there it is. And, and the, the crowd goes wild. The, the score on your home uh, bug has been changed. Score on the field has been changed. We are all up to speed now. Snap it. Harding hands that one up the gut, makes a couple of men miss, makes even more men miss, and he's going to turn around and go upfield and make something out of nothing. How many times have we said that tonight? What a cutback. I mean, Stevens has eyes not behind his head, all around his head to make these cuts. And he's a tough guy to bring down. That's one, two, Three, four, I mean, wow, what a block there. That might have been the penalty right there, a legal uh, uh, block in the back. Yeah, and the River Rats are going backwards after that penalty, and that's... I think a crack back. I think that was an illegal crack back block on that play. We saw the, uh, we saw the pioneer person that was, he was motioning or going towards the play, and then he just got flat. And another possibly costly miscue mistake by the River they're, Rats they're here. They're just stubbing themselves in the toe right now. These Clock mistakes, is, the penalties. Clock is running down, and that will do it for the third quarter here. Uh, somewhat confusing, but still action-packed nonetheless. Stick around, fourth quarter. Who knows what the fourth quarter will bring? Only CTN Sports Game of the Week. Come right back. Welcome back, everybody, to the start of the fourth quarter here at Riverbank Stadium. I'm Nick the Jinx Wisniski, along with Kevin the Mayor Bryant here. Fourth quarter coming up here, Kevin. A anything could happen. We've seen a lot. Yeah, and this is the Ted Heisel Bowl. He was Mr. Ann Arbor, so to have these two teams five points away heading into the fourth quarter, he was the one that suggested to make this game an end-of-the-season type of game. We're almost back to being the final game of the season. And, uh, I mean, this has been the best game we've had on CTN Sports all year long. Oh, by far. This one's, again, back and forth, punch, counter punch, big plays, fun plays. And another big run there by Quinn Stevens. 
and Stevens refuses to go down, period, as let alone easily. I mean, our, we ran out of digits to keep up with the rushing statistics for the River Reds between Stevens and Easley. Five or six, they both are well over 100 yards, I'd say. Oh, most definitely. And then, I mean, you, you add Harding to the mix, too. Tough to bring yeah. down. When you give him a little bit of time and a little bit of space, he can either chuck one deep or make you miss and go run it upfield. What a one-two punch this, these guys have. And another big run for the Rats there. I believe that was five. That I think that was easily on the on carry. One. You can just go by what his, yeah, there I'm going by is. the hand and the gloves. But just look at the blocking downfield. And you got receivers still blocking downfield because they are accustomed to running backs or maybe even a quarterback coming 20 yards down the field with the rock. And I know it's easier said than done. We watched the River Rats uh, gang tackle guys all night long. The Pioneers need to take a little page out of that book. And there we finally see a couple of players wrap somebody up. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good on that snap because that catch by Hardy, and he ended up giving a handoff. How about this? Wow. Right place in the right time for Stevens. Just the quintessential yoink and kept going. Ball bouncing your way if you're a River Red tonight. Yeah, you're, you're feeling good about things when, when every part of that sequence could have went horribly wrong, but instead you get a little bit of a gain. Steven still didn't go down. And they're blowing the whistle. He's still on his feet. Harding now another handoff goes to his left. Steven's finally tackled outright. This is reminiscent of that opening drive for the River Reds where they were just getting chunk eight yards here, seven yards here and with a mixture of the running backs. So you don't know if it's going to be the thunder or the lightning. And no reason for the River Rats to do much of anything other than run the ball at this point. They want that clock to run. They've got this five-point lead, and they're going to make the Pioneers do the hard thing, which is bring down both of these running backs. And it's the, the best unit uh, for the River Rats is this offense. I mean, the special teams, shaky. Defense, not as great as the offense has been doing. And here's the third runner, right? Another great job of the keeper there. I mean, that was clearly designed. That wasn't any sort of no, that was all misplay. Run. Harding is immediately thinking, I'm running left. Another uh, snap just a little bit too high. High and high. I mean, and we've already seen a snap sail over Harding's head. Um, so they, they definitely, or that was the kicker, that was a punter that the snap uh, went over their head. So, I mean, you definitely want to make sure that a turnover here would just stymie the River Reds. Second and four now flanked by two running backs. Ends that one into, maybe was that Santana Jones again? We called his name a few we times. We did after Defensively, that interception. We've seen him uh, on the offensive so side of the ball, and he's going to bring something a little bit different. And again, the River Rats are, are they're taking their time, and they're running different players every down. So you got fresh legs out of the backfield, man. That is exactly the, the point, and probably the concept of what's going on down there. Fresh legs. Another handoff up the gut. That's going to keep that clock moving down with 8.52. Look at the way the line fires off. You see the entire offensive guard, center, and guard. They're at the second level. And, and they're at the second level before the running back is even getting the handoff. That's some great offensive line play out of the River Rats. I mean, it's a good job. And they're not in a hurry. They're making those offensive linemen happy right now. Handoff to Easley. He's quick. He's so quick to get that handoff and going in. Now look at that. I love the, the way the right tackle uh, shoves the defender after holding him a little bit. After, after just, holding just him a nothing bit. but jersey. He's clutching. Every play. Clutching jersey and throwing there, yeah? It's like rubbing and racing, man. Harding out to Dyson oh, Sims. The Sims down. They blew the whistle dead. But that ball looked like it may have been coming loose, Nick. 
that yeah, was it, close. That was awfully close, awfully close. They tried to go uh, away from their running. Then we'll see uh, Dyson Sims here. And he's going down, and it doesn't look like he's all the way down, but the whistle is blown right there on the ball. The ground, ground definitely caused the bump on his elbow, that. slammed into it. Popped up like a gopher there. Third and five to go now, and a little bit of miscommunication or or unsureness on that offensive line. It looks like something's going on with his helmet. It looks like his chin strap came loose. He's getting a little bit of help there from his uh, little linemen. Like, you know, linemen are really nice. They're big, but they're very kind people. That's, that's exactly right. That's what I've always told. Helpful and kind. Oh, look at Steve, he's just bowl over those defenders. And if you need a, need a chunk of yards, there it is. That's and, the recipe and, right and there. And this is the drive the Rats really needed. I mean, they were stubbing themselves in the toe with a lot of stupid penalties, and, and they really calming themselves down by just running between the tackles. Yeah, nothing, nothing too cutesy, nothing too crazy. Just handoff right, handoff left. You're not seeing a lot of misdirection. You're not seeing almost any play actions yet. This might be the time to make that happen, though. Good call here on a, a fourth and one, though. Well, maybe not on this play. They're in real and tight. And that's a handoff and brought wow. down behind the line of scrimmage. Big tackle and a big play by Pie High to come up Was huge McCoy, when they 81? need it the most. Hampton on the tackle there. Now one of the coaches let us know, but watch this play here. What a time to find yourself in the backfield if you're a pioneer defender on a fourth and inches. Right, I mean, we've seen the River Rats just do almost anything that they want, running the ball, keeping the ball on the ground. And then when they only needed a yard, they blocked in close and man, the Pioneers got in there, made that big tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And the Pioneers have got something going with 6.28 to go here in the fourth, down only five yards. What's going five on points, now, though? It looks like they're, they're having a conference on the sideline, and I can see the back of Judge is looking at his watch already. So, I mean, are we going to be setting up for a turnover timeout? Because Pioneers are taking their own sweet time here to get this playoff. This is where you want to have one of those stadium clocks that has the game clock on it. Yeah, you can see Wong looking to the sideline. You can see Wong looking back at the judge right now, and they just called the timeout. Why oh not? You gotta call that my timeout. God. After a, after a turnover, you can't get your act together to get a play in on time that you got to call a timeout? Oh, Confusion. my God. Confusion. Confusion? Apparently. Wow. That, 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 that's, that's, I'm sorry, but that's got to be, while you're following us on our social media, you'll probably comment, that's a bad coaching decision right there because it was only six minutes left in the game. Timeouts are golden. Right, you are. You'd like to think that that's not going to come back for him on that one, but you got to make, you got to call that timeout as opposed to taking the penalty there. I'm not sure. You got to get the call in, is what you got to do. And, um, and I don't know if the the pioneers are trying to do something cute, where the the personnel wasn't in. But uh, to burn a timeout in the fourth quarter after a turnover, that's that's tough to swallow. We got another whistle before things even got going here. I don't think the uh, the ref was in position yet. They blew the ref, they blew the uh, flag so he can get, or blew the whistle so he can get in position. And there's Wong again. Oh, that's got to be a face mask, right? It's got to be a face mask. Wong's whole head turned around, and we are in October. It looked like the Exorcist. I mean, watch this right here. And what are we on, the Exorcist 15? I know we're on a remake of it, but watch his head. All the way around. He's got to I mean, find his body, right? But Wong nonplussed, right? He gets that head yanked back, spins away, and just keeps muscling forward. It looks like they did call that penalty. They got it because they're marking it off. 
Maybe, maybe our replay booth is down there on the sideline and somebody's running over. They're throwing replay flags down there. I mean, we're figuring out the score. We're figuring out some penalties up here. We, you know, just, just look Check up here. Check the earpiece down yeah. there on one of those guys. Because they, they might be listening to our feed. I saw them tapping into the, the truck earlier. Those officials. Crafty brunch. Wong rolls out to his right, looking wide the whole way. He's got Brabs downfield, but just overshoots him. Wong had his man down there. He definitely did, and it looked like Burkhart was coming through uh, from the other side and gets caught up into some traffic because Wong had another person that he could have gone to, but he decided to go deep with that ball, and Brabs doesn't look like that was his original route. No, I, it, usually you see uh, that wide receiver streaking a little bit more, whereas where Brabs was at that point in the play wasn't exactly where he needed to be. And I'll, I'll still keep an eye on 12 if I'm the River Reds because he hasn't found the end zone yet, and uh, he's, he's Farha is an end zone finder. Screen pass that got blown up. Wong makes something happen. He's still behind the line of scrimmage, and Smart. he wisely just rainbows that guy out of bounds. Hey, a ball boy gets some credit from the stands on that catch over the shoulder. It was a nice grab. It nice grab. He, he, lo he looked it right into his right, like you said, over his shoulder. Looked it right into his into his bread basket. Looks like it was a poor throw back onto the field of play, though. Yeah, you yeah, know, every, every moment can't out. rule. You're getting yeah. there. It slipped out of his hand. That's right. But that play, that last play was uh, the Huron defense stepping up and really recognizing the screen to the top side of the formation, and Wong had nowhere to go. And there's going to be an offsides on the River Rats. Just the, the, the little miscues that are going to help the Pioneers jump forward. They and were at third and ten. Right? Exactly I right. I mean, that was going to be a third and ten. And now you're moving it up to a third and five. And there's a lot more plays you can run at this point, at this juncture, if it's only third and five. And that, that I mean, you can see where the River Rat defender was not looking at all at the ball that's right, to him, right in front of him. Nose guards and wideouts should never go off sides. You're looking at the ball, both positions. Trick and now the Pioneers will switch up the play a little bit. They're bunched up in that formation. As yeah, a quick Burkhart. early handoff. That play was sniffed out quick. Did you like that call there, Nick? I mean, you don't look like you, you're, you're too happy with that call. I mean, I understand what they were going for there. Here, you, I mean, as, as the replay was coming up, I can understand that we're going to do this quick. You're not going to expect this. You're not going to let the play, you're not going to give the defense a chance to watch the play develop. It's just like, bam, here you go. Um, but it, it just clearly didn't catch them off guard. And, and the one thing about this river at defense that has been completely stable the whole game has been that and interior middle, defensive middle. line. Yes. And now another big fourth down play. We saw Heron turn it over. What will Pioneer do? Pioneers did pick up two yards on that play. It was a shotgun to Wong. He's going to step up, and he's probably going to run for that first down. He gets it. Shakes a man, shirks a tackle, falls forward, and first down, Kalen Wong. And man, Wong has just put this team and put this offense on his back. He's been knocked around, beaten. Everything. Horse collared, Horse -collared <laughs> face masked. Take another hit there in the backside. I mean, he's going to leave here with a couple marks on his body. And, he and he's going to leave up. here with the respect of his squad. Yeah, they, they, they know that he's a leader. They know that he's the guy that they look to. He's earned this spot that he's at. And again, just a sharp kid, lots of poise. And he has been key player of the week. Several twice. times. Twice. Twice. He's looking for the hat trick. Yeah, we're going to have to get a bigger key. <laughs> I think the, the way the Pioneers are driving, they don't want Huron to possess the ball again. You know, we're right at five minutes left on the clock, and the way that they're calling this game, they're getting down to fourth down and short, and, um, and it, it's, it's like, hey, we want to win this game on a walk-off TD. Well, Pioneers put together two really long drives in the second half. 
Long there gets that. He gets his man in fast out the middle, but flag on the play with 419 to go. Oh, yep, that's on the offense, so that's going to back the Pioneers up. I was just going to mention that that's the one thing the Pioneers have been. It's clean. You know, and, and if maybe we could see this. Let me see. It was on the top side. The receiver was actually moving before the penalty the play started. And as the Pioneers look, like look he was in. Looked like he was offside, and he was yeah. trying to sneak back onside. Yeah. So second and 15 now for the Pioneers. 4.19 to go here in this fourth quarter. But the Pioneers down by five. They need to get down there and score. Wong on the run as he ever has been. And he throws that one to a River Rat defender. That Angelo Rivera there comes up big. And Wong is still down on the ground after that play. He took a big hit trying to find his man open on the sideline. But the River Rat player stepped in between. And I just love a River Rat that wears 15. Was that your old? Oh, of nice. course it was. Uh, I thought they retired that number years ago, too. Got to go talk to Dottie Davis or one of these athletic directors over here. Man, that was a face mask on the sideline, right? And Wong was looking for uh, Farha there, but Rivera did a nice job of stepping up, pulling that one down, staying in bounds. And now with only 4.12 to go, the River Rats are in control of this game. And there you can see Wong at the end there get knocked down. It seemed like he got a, a pop on his hip there. Wow, he gets tackled outside. I mean, you got to keep your head on the swivel in this game, that's right? That's right. A little, little, little something extra for you. A little how's your mother at the end out there. Now this is where that one timeout may come back into Mont Pioneer because the River Rats are going to definitely be keeping the ball on the ground. That is a great call on that. As the clock drops down, 351, second and 11 here, and the River Rats, not a lot of emergency in their movement there. Coach Thompson right there. See Coach Love, he's, he's on the side. That's Coach Love in the black there. We thought Coach Love was over there in that goal. See Coach Love on the field right next to the official. Oh, High hard snap. snap again, and the Pioneers are all over Harding. They ripped him down with ruthless, uh, hey, ruthless well, aggression we, in there. said it several times, these snaps. These scary snaps, and that one was high and hard. And then at the end of the play, I mean, a lot of the officials aren't seeing what's going on once these players start grabbing at the top side of the, of the players. You're getting some face masks, some tugs on the back of the jersey. And um, right now, I think this timeout is by the River Rats, right? I didn't see which side was going, but they, I mean, they need to come over and. A, we got to get a good snap here. And you need to determine, I mean, it's third and 17, handing the ball off. You don't have off. a lot of plays for third right. and 17. Right. But you do have a quarterback that can go back, assess the field, and put pressure on that defense with his legs as well. So uh, if I'm Huron, I'm not trying to, uh, let's say, back into a win. I'm trying to win this game, so I'm not trying to just run that clock out. I'm trying to get a first down. Yeah, and, and you said it. We've seen a lot from Harding. He can win the ball with his arm, but he can also step back, assess the situation, and make something happen with his legs. So uh, third and 17 is, is a tall task here for the River Rats, but the Pioneers have got to be on their P's and Q's as well. And they have no safeties in the back of the Pioneers. Everybody's within five, six yards of the line of scrimmage. Over-anxious defense there. Harding's going to keep it, and he's going to – Backwards. Lose yards, lose yards, and lose more yards, and the Pioneers bring him down at the 15-yard line, oh, and a flag wow. flies at oh, the end. Did they do? Did they say a special word down there in the field? Harding's pointing first down for the River Rat. This is going to be the game-changing call, Nick. Huron's lost 20 yards on the last two plays from poor snaps and, and just uh, great tackling. Ill-conceived uh, motion there. Man, that's going to be an automatic first down, or you're going to call it, yeah. That's going to be first down, an automatic first down, right? 
Oh, they did not move it as a first down play. Coach Griggs is getting very irate on the sideline here. And here we can see Harding getting starting to get wrapped up. He decides to go back a little bit further. At that point, just take the knee and go down. Yeah, but I didn't see anything unless that right there. Can't I mean standing over and clapping is not that the most sportsmanlike move man, I've that ever was seen. Weak. It's that was weak. I mean, it, it, he all he did was clap. He really didn't clap inside the kid's face because Hardy wasn't looking at him. He clapped over his head. Are you implying that Ted Heisel might be spinning in his grave? Oh boy, that's kind of well. That's, he did say this was a natural here. fit for the last game of the year. He's so. he's right. So it will be fourth and 12, even with that penalty. River Rats are getting ready to kick away here. That one bounces up to the punter, but pulls it in nicely, kicks it high. And you're going to see a lot of Pioneers not go anywhere near uh -oh. that. And that put, <laughs> took a major pie high bounce and gets back on this side of the 50. And 2.35 to go with pretty nice field position here. Watch the bounce on this. The English goes the wrong way. I mean, you, you got the tumbler, and you want it to hit and bounce forward. But this is like one of your chip shots. Look at that backup boogaloo. It felt like, yeah, that felt like a 60 degree right there. Yeah. Got high, kind of stopped, Take and a pulled back check. just a little bit. That's yes, right. Sir. That's right. Look at Coach Love right there. He really wants this one. Oh, you know, you know he wants this one bad. You know he wants to keep that streak going uh, that, that his predecessors have put forward. He wants to keep, he, he wants to keep holding this over his rival's head, right? Like that's what it is. That's what it's going to come it's down huge. to. It's huge. I mean, this is a, not just for that Ted Hosel trophy. Playoff positioning is on the line here in this last 235. Long now running as he has been this entire half, but he finds Brabs who brings in the catch at about the 45-yard line. And the clock continues to roll. So we'll have yeah, second Pioneer's and Pioneer's going to have to get five. out the hurry up now. Not sure. Look at Easley. He was stalking. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of urgency right now out of the Pioneers. They're still doing the look and see from the coaching staff on the side. They want to get this, this play right. Hand off to Lage, and he's really? not going to come up with that first down. Gets about two. That was a surprise call right there, running up the middle where you said several times the strength of the Huron defense is right up the gut, and you're trying to run right into the teeth of that defense. Not a lot of room in there. No, now only 138 as the clock continues to go down. Yeah, that, that handoff didn't take out, right? anybody. Yeah, didn't confuse, didn't surprise anybody. And that one's up the middle. That will be the first down. That Burkhart comes up with the catch second, there. Right? That will stop the clock while they move the chains. And let's watch it as it gets spot. This is where I always say, Nick, why don't they just clock it the ball instead of rushing through four downs? Clock it right now, and you get you another. You're second and ten. Long looking deep. He's got half a second. He's got Brabs coming into the middle. Wow, Brabs got, a, got away from some contact. It looked like there may have been a penalty for defensive holding. Let's it, see about this. It felt like it was very pickish going on there. There was a, a body that impeded his forward progress. It was just before we got to it there. That was close, but that's why you throw the ball deep because either you get a penalty or maybe you get the, the reception. And worst case, well, not the absolute worst case scenario, but a worst case scenario is clock right stops. Yeah. Well, that too. 108 to go now. Pioneer scrimmaging from their 38. Man in motion is Farha. He's always a good look on the right-hand side. Wahung spins to the right, and he's looking for all those receivers on the right-hand side. Overthrows Farha out of bounds. And Farha was definitely covered on that play. Not a lot of room on this play. And it was a timing play. So once Wong has to cut up inside, he double padded the ball. And you can see how Farha was running out of bounds. And now the Pioneers looking in. As we do that, I got to mention all of our incredible staff out there doing 
making these images come in. Tim the guy, Ken Simpson, Jelani Embry all on camera doing it so great out there. Uh, on audio replay, we got Jacob Newlywed Smith and of course Rob Cross in the truck. Thank you guys so much for all your hard work and all the great things you're doing to make this broadcast possible. Here comes Farha. Far in motion. Farha never not in motion. And another falling down slant catch there for Ocean Brabs. And here we go. Fourth down in the game for the Pioneers with the clock moving. And this is where you'd love to have a timeout call. And now they finally get a timeout called in. I wonder if they're going to put some more time back on that clock. Yeah, it feels like they should get at least a few seconds. I'm sure I think the referee is going to give them that. So here it goes. We're coming down to one play. I mean, to keep the drive alive in one play and to keep the uh, game alive, really, for the Pioneers, right? And well, absolutely that. But I mean, you, this is the time that you need your offensive line to come up big. You've got to give your quarterback a couple of seconds to make the pass, or you need to open up a hole to get your running back pushed through there. Well, also, you got to, if you're the Huron defense too, you got to make sure that you keep eyeballs on Wong because he's shown you that he can go ahead and use his legs to get these five yards because that's all the Pioneers need. And with 46 seconds left, uh, Maybe if they do get this first down, you do clock it to reset your offense for this final drive, this final push. And here we go, long from the shotgun, as we've seen so much this evening. Looks like a quick slant pass, finds his man, and he will fall down for that first down. That chains so are close. moving. Man, we need to see the replay before they move the chains, but they got the clock going so fast. Now, Pioneers, you should be clocking the ball and saving some time. The clock is moving now. 33 seconds to go here in this fourth quarter as the Pioneers drive. They're looking deep. Ocean grabs. He's got two men, and he makes the catch. Falls short onto the two-yard line, though. 26 seconds now to go. Big play, big gutsy throw, incredible catch by Ocean Brabs down there on the two, and they've got a lot to work with here. And the Rabs are gonna have to call timeout because they weren't or not set. And oh my gosh, we gotta take a look at this play because on a fourth down and five, look at what Kalen Wong pulls out to Ocean Brabs, his favorite target today. Well, I mean, Brad, he's probably his favorite target every day yeah. because you can just count on him going up and making a catch. Brabs is fast. He's streaking down the sidelines, but he's also tall. He's strong. He's got everything you want in that wide receiver. How much pressure was on that play for Pioneer to be successful? And this show, I mean, this is gumption right here on both sides. You said the offensive line had to do well. But look at where that ball is at. And I just think Brabs wanted that ball more. I mean, he definitely did it in an amazing effort to go up, spin around, make that catch in motion, two-handed, bring it down. He had two players around him as well. It's not like he was wide open. Yeah, turning your body around and keeping your eyeballs on the ball to bring it in. That was a huge play. And, and now, let's see them punch it in. Push tush goes nowhere. No, QB keeper. That's going to cost a lot them. of time. That's going to cost a lot of time. They're going to have to spike the ball. No timeouts, right? Right, you are. Clock down to 10, 8. And he threw that one in. And oh, wow. Just a little extra something there at the end. Yeah, but I love this, Nick. We're down to third down. Goal Two yards go. away. Seven seconds on the clock. Now Ted Heisel is spinning in the grave. <laughs> he's, 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 he's even dancing. spinning in a grave he's or he's dancing, dancing in a grave. That's right. No, this is exactly what he envisioned when he wanted, like you said, to set this game up late in the year between these two teams. It's huge. Seven seconds to go now. Wong, he's got one, he's got grabs wide open right. He's got a man to the left. He's looking, he's walk. scrambling. He makes a move, he makes a move, and he gets into the end zone with one second to go. Just an incredibly heady, gutsy play from Kalen Wong, as we've seen all night long. 
Wong gets his team into the promised land and seemingly for the victory here at Riverbank Stadium. Here he is looking both players off. And look at him bowl over Elijah Hayward on his way into the end zone. He didn't just take that hit. He is the one that laid it down and smashed into it. That was incredible. The, the fans are ready to stomp onto the field and celebrate this last second victory for the Pioneers as they, they, they worked the clock. I'm sitting up here saying, hey, you're using too many timeouts. They worked it down to one second on the clock, knew exactly what they were doing, and they're gonna walk away outside a kick return with the Ted Heisel Trophy. Ted Heisel Trophy's been getting a little dust on it over here at the River Rats for the last three years, and it's not gonna be standing over here after tonight. That trophy's gonna find a new home in one second. Cheerleaders are going wild. The Huron stands are emptying as we speak. All the Pioneers are gonna have to do is really just squib this one down, not give the uh, River Rats any shot of any kind of return. The, uh, this has just been an amazing contest, full of action. From beginning to end, this game has one more play. Maybe the Pioneers do this fake kickoff kick and kick the ball so they can walk away with this well-earned Dub. This second half has been just full of action. Wow, they finally kicked it. They do just what we said, an onside kick. Here's the pitcherama. The ball goes back. It looks like it's Harding. Harding's going to get put on his back. Ball still is loose. Players are running out onto the field. I cannot believe this. We got mayhem going on. There was a penalty flag. So the fans are going to have to get off the field. The Pioneer student section are getting pushed back by the coach. You can see Coach Briggs there right in the middle. He is livid trying to get these fans back. And there's a penalty flag on the field. And I wonder if that's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Coach Griggs is right out there trying to speak to see if that is going to be on the, it looks like the, by the reaction, the penalty is going to be on the Pioneer student section. So this game, as the players are lining up, officials are trying to let them know this game is not over yet. There's a penalty flag on the field. Do not line up to shake hands. The announcer's telling everybody not to shake hands. And let's see what this penalty is going to be called on. It is an unsportsmanlike call. It's going to go against the kicking team, the Pioneers. So we may have one more down uh, for the River Rats. What an ending. Man, Ted. So this will be a, a untimed down, it looks like. They are going to give the River Rats one more shot at this. Man, maybe we can take a look and see. I mean, because of where the, the penalty flags came out, they definitely were thrown at the Pioneer bench. But because you definitely didn't have the the River Rats rushing out onto the field. But, man, I want to say what's going on with the administration of the Pioneers on the sideline to allow those kids to get out there on the field. And they lock us out as announcers before the game starts. So now we'll have one more play for the River Rats. And I'm assuming you're going to have all kinds of pitches on this play as well. 
Pioneers have about three safeties back about 50, 15 yards deep. Harding takes the snap and there's going to be another penalty and it looks like it's going to be a timeout for the River Rats. So definitely a Hail Mary pass is going to be dialed up here with no time on the clock. Never had a game like this uh, in this series. We've had games in with donuts on the clock, 1987, but we've never had a game in with a penalty with an untimed down. Look at Nick over there just chilling with that key. He, he really wants to give it away. Nobody's talking to him. I know if I saw a gentleman on the sideline with a very large gold key, I'd have to ask him what kind of car he's driving. Here on the the 38 yard line. So here the comes TJ Thompson in the middle of that of huddle, trying to dial up a 62 yard play. Now there should be a lot of pitching on this. Harding is actually wide out to the bottom of the screen the quarterback is so Wells is going to be the QB he's the one with bigger wheels he's going backwards he's going to throw it in the middle and that will do it and 40 to 38 as the Pioneers in Huron's reign of three victories in a row and they will take the Ted Heisel Bowl 2023 style as the teams are coming together. Glad to see that we're getting out of here with no issues on the field. We're going to take a quick break, let these players shake hands and give Nick a chance to run down there and find our key player of the game. We'll be right back. Hey folks, I hope you like what you're watching. And if you do, hit that little like button and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A2CTN Sports. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Down here, player, key player of the game, Kalen Wong. You've signed that thing a few times now, but this one has got to feel especially good. Tell me about this one. It's great. You know, we've been, we've been talking about it all week. You know, we needed this one to go to the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we just made the playoffs. It feels amazing. City champions. I mean, it's all we could have asked for this season. You're talking all this team stuff, but tell me about your favorite target, Ocean Brabs, coming up on that last drive. Oh yeah, no, that was huge. You know, he has, he's been a little quiet these past couple weeks, dealing with an ankle injury, but uh, he came up big for us as he always is. He's reliable, that's what we call him. You had a warrior's heart on that last drive. Tell me what was going through your mind, pushing into the end zone to get that touchdown. Yeah, you know, there's no time on the clock, nothing to spike, you know, touchdown or we go home. So, had to score the touchdown. That's the mentality that we love to see. Thank you so much, Kalen, Kevin. Well, thanks a lot, Nick. That was a great game and an incredible finish for Kalen Wong and the entire Pioneers, who we will have right here next week for our CTN Sports Game of the Week as they take on the Pinkney Pirates. Arr. Well, for my man Nick Wisninski, I'm Kevin Bryant. For another Ted Heisel Bowl game here on CTN Sports. Thanks for watching, folks. Good night. You know what else they keep on the top shelf besides the goals? What's that, man? The peanut butter. Mmm.